The pace car will make the left turn onto pit road. Now the field in the hands of Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. They make up row number one. Denny Hamlin won the pole. In the final race of 2015 and Jeff Gordon's final race, the green flag is in the air. Joey Logano with a great start jumps out in front of Denny Hamlin. Gordon to the bottom of the track, trying to get by Ryan Newman. Gordon passes Newman for fourth. Joey Logano, Denny Hamlet, Kyle Busch, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, the top five. And Kevin Harvick's worked his way up to 11th. Mark Truex really just couldn't get going as well as Harvick could. And a little bit of issues in three and four. Just didn't have the grip that Harvick had. Just falling back just a little bit. Sun definitely could be an issue in the early stages of this race. A lot of teams weren't expecting the sun to be in their eyes at the start of the race. Kelly. And this team, the 78 team, made a lot of changes overnight. Martin Truex Jr. didn't really know what to expect. And in these early laps, he just said it's very tight in the center right now. The team telling him to use that track bar to raise it up to help loosen up that car. The 78 did. They leaned on some of their associates at Richard Tudor's Racing, compared notes. They didn't like where they were on speed in practice. As Kelly said, they made major, major changes. I know Cole Pern had to have a little bit of nerve to try to figure out what was the best thing to do. Stick with something you practiced, even though it didn't seem to be great, or change everything and shoot for something even better. That's what they have to do, Rick. They have to go out and beat their competitors. You'll always be able to see where the championship four running. That will be just below the ticker. And you already see the two lines forming. Denny Hamlin up near the wall. Joey Logano much lower on the racetrack. It's going to be interesting to see what Joey Logano does now as Hamlin's moved up the racetrack. Joey's going to move up the racetrack and try to take his line away from him. Hamlin all the way up against the wall, running second. Joey Logano out front. We talked about the potential sun. Look at Denny Hamlin's very unique visor setup on his helmet. He has a visor that protects his eyes from the dust, but then he also has that sunshade just above it. Top two separating themselves. Kyle Busch runs third. Kyle Busch almost a second and a half back from these two. Joey Logano after a great start. Able to get in front of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. These are the first laps that Joey Logano has led at Homestead Miami Speedway. Logano won all three of the races in round two. Swept. That part of the playoffs and looked to be the favorite as he was entering round three of the chase within Martinsville, taken out in an accident. There's the 22 out front, the final race of the season. Mike? And, and Rick, as you alluded to, all that success in the playoffs for Joey Logano, many people expected him to be one of the final four here on championship weekend. So you can imagine the disappointment in their camp. Todd Gordon, the crew chief for Joey Logano, told me this morning that uh, they were disappointed, but they do have new goals. And they're the same as Joey said last week after getting out of the car, being optimistic. He said, we've got one more race. We're going to go try to win that one. They feel like I've got a pretty good race car here today, although he's hitting the splitter a little bit right now. And he says it's a bit tight, but pretty happy with the way it's driving. Joey Logano has been out front all seven of the laps that have been run. And mentioned that an accident that took place in Martinsville. It was Matt Kenseth. He took out the 22. He was suspended for the next two races, but back here for the season finale. So Denny Hamlin trying to work the bottom of the racetrack, trying to gain some ground. The 22 that wasn't working, so now Denny's gone all the way up against the wall, inches away from it. Trying to find some momentum to reel in the 22. We know we've got a break coming up at lap 25, that competition caution.
Get the ultimate pass to every moment of today's championship race with Race Buddy. Ride along with different drivers through multiple HD feeds and follow the action with a live leaderboard. Tune in at NASCAR.com forward slash Race Buddy. Caution is out. Possible fluid on the track may have come from the 11. We saw just moments ago smoke rolling out from the back of the 11. Then the smoke subsided. It wasn't as bad. Some drivers were saying they thought maybe some fluid was being put down. You see some heavy smoke right here out of the back of the 11. Actually, some fire underneath the race car. You can see all the fire, perhaps a piece of debris or, or fluid. It might be fluid. The big concern at this point is this is one of our championship contenders' teammates. The 11 and the 18 are teammates 31 up into the wall. Uh, talk about fluid on the racetrack. Perhaps that's what Ryan Newman got into. But if you're Kyle Busch, you want to understand what's happening with that 11, Mike. Yeah, and you guys may be on to something. Uh, Denny radioed in. He thought it was something in the back, and he, what his speculation was was it was gear oil. So uh, th that's what he thinks anyways. He's, he has that assumption because of the way it smells. He can probably smell inside the car, and different fluids have different smells. So rear end grease, transmission grease, they have a different smell than other things. It was, it was interesting, though. It looked like it was almost coming out of the middle of the car, and it was a big fire. I thought that maybe something had gotten on the headers and it caught right. on fire, but it certainly looked like something that was the fire was being generated by oil of some sort. The exhaust works its way all the way back just in front of the right rear tire. Is there a possibility that maybe some fluid, something got onto that exhaust as we see them making their way to pit road? Dave? Rick, they didn't want to spend a uh, set of tires this early, but he said if we don't, we'll probably get run over. So a little adjustment for a car that was a little bit loose off. Four tires and fuel for Kevin Harvick. Kelly? Martin Trex Jr. raised that track bar, but by the end of that run, he said he was in a four-wheel slide. It was right sides only for the 78. Jeff Gordon said his car was tight entry, tight middle, a loo little loose on the exit. He did hit some debris off turn four, but nothing to be concerned with. The wedge adjustment, Mike. And Kyle Busch a little bit tight, looking for a little drive off, a four-tire change and an air pressure adjustment. And before the competition caution, which will come at lap 25, they're not allowed to add fuel to the car. So it will just be adjustments and tire changes for these teams. Welcome back to Homestead Miami Speedway and the Ford EcoBoost 400. The 11 of Denny Hamlin has gone into the garage. And it looks as though we're going to add another lap before the green flag comes out after these pit stops. What about the strategy from the championship four? Well, I like the strategy for the championship four. They all pitted. They all took tires. Martin Truex Jr., very aggressive with the pit call, took right side tires. I like where Cole Pern's mind is already. He's going to be aggressive, point the issue. But the big issue, Jeff, is some cars stayed on the track in front of them. They're going to be much slower on these older tires. So this restart has the opportunity to be very chaotic in one and two. Yeah, the top four stayed out, and, and now they're going to be much slower. These tires wear out very, very quickly. We've seen as much of a second fall off in only five laps. So these front four potentially are going to hold the field up. And like we talked about at the start of the race, now all these championship contenders, they have a decision to make. How aggressive can I be? I agree. I like the call from Martin Truex Jr. Remember, we have a competition caution around lap 25. NASCAR normally, if a caution comes before lap 25, like it did today, they'll extend it a few laps. We really don't know what that lap number is yet, but by putting two tires on, they gained a lot of spots on pit road. Question is, will it cost them now? And it's sending a, setting a tone. Cole Pern says, look, I know I might be the underdog, but I'm gonna fight. I don't, I don't care what the other three contenders have done. I'm gonna do what I have to do for the 78. Even this early in the race, he's already standing his ground. I think that might mean more than the amount of tires that are on the race cars with the 78 willing to take risks. The two, the Brad Kozlowski had too many men over the wall. They were making some repairs to that car. So they have to go to the back for this restart. And the competition caution we're being told from NASCAR will be on or around lap 30. So they've added five laps to the competition caution. Pace car back on the pit road and the field in the hands of Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney. They make up row one. Logano on the outside back into the gas first. Four wide here comes Kyle Busch in the 18. Martin Truex Jr. in the middle. Kyle Busch on the bottom. Kyle 
Kyle Larson on the outside. Two championship contenders side by side. A two tire change for the 78 team, four tire change for the 18. And now the 18 shooting for the lead to the bottom of the track. Kyle Busch out front in Miami. Carl Edwards in the 19 goes to the bottom to get by Martin Truex Jr. Older tires, even though it's only 15, 16 laps on the tires of the 22, definitely not as strong as the 18 or 19 as they both get by. And we see Jeff Gordon looking underneath Martin Truex. Martin Truex only did two tires. They're okay. If they lose four, three or four spots, they're okay with that because they're still going to pit at the competition caution further ahead than they would have if they would have done four. So that was the gamble that Cole Pern and the 78 took. Jeff Gordon able to get by Martin Truex Jr. And Gordon trying to get by the 22 of Joey Logano. Let's look back on that restart, focusing in on Jeff Gordon. This has been a weak point for Jeff Gordon and this team all year long. We've, he's got to find a way to get better resources. Look at the gap he's leaving in front of the car, the, between he and the car that's in front of him. He's going to have to be more aggressive as this race moves forward. He got a break because all these guys had two tires or no tires. He had four, so it didn't hurt him. But later in the race, he is going to have to be more aggressive. Yeah, this isn't a point battle where you're protecting a points lead. These four competitors are tied, Rick. Whoever outruns the other three is the champion. You cannot be conservative. As much as you want to protect your car, you can't be conservative. But it's no surprise to me. We see a contender, Kyle Busch, leading. We see right here Jeff Gordon in third, Kevin Harvick in fourth, Martin Truex in fifth. All four championship four running in the top five. Now, there is a balance. There's always a balance. How aggressive do I need to be at a certain point in the race? Jeff Gordon's smart. We have 245 laps to go. He knows he's got to be in one piece if he's going to have a chance to win this championship. It's okay to be a little, you know, a little safe right now, but as it moves forward, as we get closer to the end, you no longer can do it. You've got to attack. Cautiously aggressive. Jeff Gordon, maybe not as aggressive as he needs to be later in this race as they continue to fight on the outside. Jeff Gordon trying to get back by the four. Kevin Harvick on the bottom of the track. Trying to make the pass on the 24. Hard to make this pass. The bottom, we talked about it when the, before the race. The bottom of the racetrack has so much less banking than the top of the racetrack. Jeff Gordon's working the top where there's more banking. Kevin Harvick's in the middle of the racetrack or toward the bottom. There's much less banking, much less grip for Kevin Harvick. So if he can overtake Jeff Gordon, he has a superior handling car because the racetrack is certainly not helping him. They continue side by side. The 11 of Denny Hamlin has made his way back out onto the track. He was only in the garage for three laps. So he is three laps down, running 43rd. As now the 24 of Jeff Gordon goes to the bottom of the track and will chase after the four of Kevin Harvick. And you see the advantage that the middle and upper lanes have over the bottom. Kevin Harvick, while he didn't get beat into the corner and actually was even a little slower through the middle, he carried that momentum on exit. As you see right here, the 24 closes in on the four in the middle of the corner. But running that higher line, Kevin Harvick will have much more momentum down the backstretch. Kyle Busch out front. Has almost a two-second lead over Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson now the top five. Martin Truex Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, Matt Kenseth, and Joey Logano in the top ten. Mike. And you know, Rick, talking with Kyle Busch's crew chief, Adam Stevens, this morning, he told me he was cautiously optimistic. This is a brand-new car, never been raced before, but he said assessing their practice. He says one of their best practices they've had all season long and you can see that the proof is in the pudding. He's been out front. He expected to be a little tight early in this run but have the balance come to him throughout this run. Okay. Mike in final practice yesterday Kevin Harvick was only 26th best on single lap runs. I asked Ryan Childers this morning if there was any concern there. He said no way. We were great in the morning. We will be good in the race. Marty. Jeff Gordon's car a little bit too tight in the middle, a little too loose off day. This also a brand new car for Jeff Gordon. It was planned to race at Texas, but when they won at Martinsville, it allowed them to shift their car rotation because they could save this new car for this championship race. Jeff Gordon told me earlier this week, I honestly feel like it's given us a better shot to win the championship, Kelly.
78 team owner Barney Visser said when it comes to David versus Goliath everyone wants to be David and we're no different the two tire call was to gain track position right now Martin Truex Jr. Is saying that he has no turn though in this car. And Martin Truex Jr. has fallen out of the top five to sixth. Matt Kenseth trying to make the move on Martin Truex Jr. Kenseth running in the top ten. As Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes his way by on the outside. And when you talk about tracks that like to run the high line, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr., he loves this position right up against the wall. I'm actually a bit surprised that the 78 is a lane down off the wall. He's normally right up there with the 88. And once again, remember the 78 was 14th before the pit stop. They did two tires that moved him up. Now they're racing for seventh, eighth position. So again, they're falling back in the field. But when this competition caution comes out, they're still going to be further ahead by using this strategy. And we're expecting that competition caution to come out any lap now. NASCAR had mentioned that it would be lap 30 or around lap 30. The 18 of Kyle Busch just said he was a little bit concerned about pit road on the radio. Let's listen in. So Kyle Busch already looking ahead saying OK when I'm exiting my pit stall the stall in front of us is a little bit wet as the competition caution has now come out. Race leader Kyle Busch. Will slow down to. The pit car or excuse me the pace car pace and it will be picked up in turn number one. Everyone will line up as we get ready for another round of pit stops and we always talk about qualifying and pit stall selection and how important it is well when I saw the 24 car I was a little surprised while he chose pit stall six because it's on a timing line what Alan Gustafson chose not to do was take an opening in or out that puts him between two cars that are on the racetrack the 34 cars behind him, the 95 cars in front now Alan's strategy is those two cars perhaps will be a lap down later in the race but these early pit stops these cars are going to be on the lead lap and where they're running back in the pack you see here Jeff Gordon this is the first pit stop of the day they drop the left side he goes to leave and you see the 95 poor Michael McDowell he, he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know if he should stop if he should go he wants to let the 24 go but then the 24 doesn't leave so then he has to go but they're losing time the whole time Marty and Steve Alan Gustafson went to the next pit box to talk to Michael McDowell's team. They've had a conversation on this set of pit stops. Michael McDowell's team will stay out to give Jeff Gordon a clear exit. That's great work by Alan Gustafson. It's more than just race cars and teamwork. You have to look at any way you can find an advantage for your race team. If you can talk to 95 into staying out, that's an advantage for the 24. Yeah, well, let's go to Dave. Kevin Harvick's veteran pit crew ready now. They will give him Sunoco fuel and four tires. He loves the entry. He's all the way up to third place, but wants help still on the exit. It's still loose off. Kelly? Martin Truex Jr. still looking for a little bit more turn in his car. He also feels like he's on the splitter a little bit. They're going to make a chassis adjustment to help him out. And it'll be four tires for the 78, Marty. Jeff Gordon said his car is a little bit too tight in the center and just won't rotate on throttle. He said, I need a little bit more. The last adjustment you gave me, four Goodyear tires and foot. Fresh Sunoco fuel, Mike. Race leader Kyle Boy saying the car started off a little bit snug but then freed up as the laps wore on. A four tire change at Sonoka Race Fuel for Kyle Busch. And that time a clear exit for the 24 as well as the 18. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Jeff Gordon, the first three off pit road. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Harvoni. Are you ready? Progressive, preparing rates to help you save. Now that's progressive. And by Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR. Mobile One. Race View Premium is free today when you visit NASCAR.com slash trial. Get access to 3D virtual video, in-car audio, real-time driver stats, and advanced pit road data. Visit NASCAR.com slash trial to start following your favorite driver like never before. What was wrong with the 11, Dave? Yeah, the crew confirmed to me, Rick, that it was definitely gear oil that they were smelling and seeing on the track. And it was a fault of something called a Wiggins clamp, Steve. As you know, they're back there and they're either faulty sometimes or they don't get installed correctly. 
Yeah, Dave, basically a Wiggins clamp is how you attach the hose to the rear end that pumps the fluid through to keeping the gear cool. It has just a little clasp on it. It's kind of hard to explain, but it latches together. There's sometimes you think they're latched, not completely latched, and they can pop apart and the hose comes off. The good news for the 18, though, the team end of the 11, it wasn't a parts failure. If it would have been a parts failure, I'm sure Kyle Busch's team would have a lot more concern. Championship four still in the top six. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards making up row number one. Kyle Busch has chose the outside line. Race leader has the option of either starting on the outside or inside. Bush on the outside, Edwards on the inside. Green flag back in the air. Jeff, we talked about more aggressive restarts with a 24. Jeff Gordon got one there. A great restart for Jeff Gordon to the bottom of the track and to the front of the field. Amazing, you can hear the near 60,000 people over the roar of 43 engines, but you could hear it there when Jeff Gordon took the lead. Marty. And Rick, what an incredible scene. Eddie DeHaan, his spotter, said the 18th spun his tires. Go, go, go. And the whole team collectively gave a fist bump, and you can hear the crowd cheering Jeff Gordon in the lead at Homestead. Here comes that 18 of Kyle Busch, though, looking at the bottom of the track. Jeff Gordon's teammate. 48 of Jimmy Johnson lurking back there in third. Phrase run where they are not is what these drivers are going to try to do. If Jeff Gordon goes high, the person following him is going to go low. If Jeff Gordon goes low, who's ever chasing him is going to go high. A little bit slower for the 18 as the 48 has a lot of momentum. And now Jimmy Johnson challenging for second. Here comes the four of Kevin Harvick as well. AT struggling right now. We saw him in the middle of three and four. He lost all the momentum. He got in the, up in the middle of the corner. It looked like he got really tight or really loose. I couldn't tell which. Got up the racetrack and all but had to stop. And 48 and the four went blowing by. And here comes the four looking to take second away from Jimmy Johnson. Kevin Harvick makes the pass, moves up to second. Gordon and Harvick, one and two. Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, the top five. 18 car went from leading this race, kind of dominating the race. This track is starting to change. Did they not keep up with it? And the five slow on the track, bringing out the caution. Casey Kane, the yellow numbers on all of Jeff Gordon's teammates. In honor of Jeff Gordon's last race. Casey Kane still right on the rear, track. Right rear. And the right rear down for Casey Kane. And Denny Hamlin is going to get one lap back on the free pass. Let's ride along with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Take a look at what happened with Casey Kane. You see the right rear tires flat. That's a great save by the five of Casey Kane. And an excellent job by Dale Hart Jr. not getting to the back of him. But the big concern for the five is, hey, that was great. They can stay out of the wall. But you see the damage to the quarter panel. The team's going to have to try to repair that, make sure the bracing is secure where they don't have another flat tire. Yeah, that, that quarter panel, if it's bent like that, the car will not drive nearly as well as it could if it's fixed correctly. So they need to take their time and really fix it. Now the big question is the decision for these teams. We've run five green flag laps. We saw earlier, just after a few more than this, 10 or 12 green flag laps, the teams that stayed on the racetrack went right back to the middle or the back of the field. What are these teams going to do? They have a set number of tires. Do they want to burn a set of tires after only five green flag laps? The leaders may or may not come, but somebody, somebody back in the pack will bring the rest of the field to Pitt Road. And you may have noticed that it looked as though the right rear tire was up as he was driving on to Pitt Road for the five of Casey Kane. They have inner liners on tracks over a mile because of the speeds that these cars carry. They will have inner liners, which is another tire that's inside of the tire. And so when the tire blew for Casey Kane, he was able to save it, and make it to Pitt Road.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by our voting. Are you ready? Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's progressive. And by Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR. Mobile One. And Black Friday just got darker. 2015 Discover NHL Thanksgiving Showdown is on NBC as the Rangers face off against the Bruins. Enjoy a day after Turkey Day treat. Live coverage from Boston begins at 1 p.m. Eastern. Getting ready for the restarts. Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, one and two. How about the last restart for Jeff Gordon? Yeah, well, we talked about Jeff Gordon needing to be much more aggressive as a race lay at all. Well, the next restart, Jeff Gordon times this perfectly. See the 18 on the outside, spins his rear tires right there. That enables the inside line to get momentum. He gets on the inside of the 19 car, makes an aggressive move, three wide into one, ends up getting the lead. That's what we need to see from Jeff Gordon. He stepped it up in one caution. It's hard to step it up much more than that. It's hard to find a fault with Jeff Gordon, but a lot of people will go, well, he might not be so good at restarts. Well, right there he showed he can do it. Well, in the last several years, self-admittedly by Jeff Gordon, restarts have been an Achilles heel. That's been their problem. And, and it's so important to have restarts. If you give up spots on these restarts, it's very difficult to get back. And it's an opportunity. Every, everybody's in one spot. If you can pick up spots, this is the best time on restart. And what I was even more impressed about was that he held the lead. The 24 car in practice didn't look like it had speed on new tires. It proved right there that if they got that track position on new tires, he could fend off the 4 and the 48 and the 18. And remember, on this restart, Jeff Gordon's the leader. The minute he gets into the restart zone, he has the option of when he wants to leave. As long as he leaves before the end of the restart zone, he's legal. And he chose the inside line. It's the first time the race leader has done that. Back into the gas, and he's got his teammate behind him. Pushing him. Jeff Gordon pushed into turn one. Kevin Harvick on the outside. Jimmy Johnson running third. Kyle Busch fourth. And now Harvick surges in front down the back stretch. Jeff Gordon picked the inside line, gave Kevin Harvick the outside. If that will set the stage for the rest of the race. Do you want the inside if you're the leader, or do you want the outside? All the way to the top of the track goes Jeff Gordon. Here comes the 18 of Kyle Busch. Fight for second is on. Kyle Busch has the advantage. Will move right up in front of the 24. And smoking down the back stretch. A wreck on the back stretch. The 88 is involved. The 15 as well. This 88 was one of the teams. Was one of the teams that chose to just come and get four tires. He was trying to use those tires, get back up through the field. They're racing two, three, and four wide down the back stretch. And he has multiple flat tires. The right front is down, the right rear is down. The 11 is going to get the free pass, and amazingly enough, will be on the lead lap after going to the garage for three laps. Also involved, Eric Almarola in the 43, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., also on pit road. It's a multi-car wreck. This is, a, this is also a great example of not giving up track position. If you get in the back of the pack, anything can happen. We see big wrecks on a restart in the back of the pack, and we saw it again. Casey Mears in the 13, also involved. Let's look back. Yeah, the 88's really trying to push the issue on these new tires. He tries to get to the outside of Ty Dillon. You see the 15 come up, actually and get into Ty Dillon. That causes the 15 to go around. He catches the 88 in the left rear quarter panel. Really, the first replay, I thought it was the 88 that pushed the 33, but looking at it a second time, that's not what happened. It looked like Clint Boyer got into the 33, got himself spun around, and caused the accident behind him. Multiple cars involved, and this is the fourth caution already. 46 laps have been completed, and that was violent. None of the four championship four came to pit road as the sun sets in South Florida. Kevin Harvick out front.
Welcome back to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Ford EcoBoost 400. This afternoon's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything we learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. I want to ride along with Clint Boyer on this wreck. See Clint gets up the racetrack, gets to the side of Ty Dillon, and that starts this entire wreck. But the next shot, I want you to ride on board, and I want you to listen to the engine sound. Three wide, you're on the bottom, but fresh the tires up top. Outside, got one. Outside, got one. So you heard outside, the spotter outside. say, three wide, you're on the bottom. That that's your signal. You know you're three wide. You heard him in the gas, there, out of the gas, there, there, several there, times. That means his car now. wasn't clear stuck in the racetrack the way clear he wanted it to be. He kept getting out of the gas, and he just had to keep chasing the car up the racetrack and end up getting to the side of Ty. And he was with Kelly moments ago. Clint, I know this is not how you wanted to end things with Michael Waltrip racing. What happened out there? Uh, I just, we, I don't know what the hell happened to our car. Um, I was kind of optimistic about the race, and we made a pit stop there, and the car is just a way, way big handful there. And I don't know, I was coming off a two there, and Ty was kind of got squirrely, and I tried to stay off of him, and my car got loose, and I just couldn't catch it. It was, I don't know, we just lost the handling on our car big time there, and unfortunately, uh, ended, you know, it, it, you hate to end this way. I wanted to. In, you know, on a strong note for everybody at MWR. Um, appreciate all their hard work and efforts, you know, all these years, but um, unfortunately it's over. It's such a tough ending for Clint Boyer and his run with Michael Waltrip Racing closing the doors after this race. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson had to come on to pit road. NASCAR mandated that they come to pit road and fix the right rear quarter panel. This has been a hot topic, Rick, since last year, that during the pit stops, they won't, don't want to see any of the team members pulling or flaring any of the fender wells. And watch the Jackman. Watch his right rear hip when he goes in to pull this right rear tire. As he moves towards the car, right around the S and the Lows, he's pushes his left rear or his right rear hip into the door trying to cave the door in in front of the quarter panel that'll put a better shape in front of the right rear tire creating a lot more downforce nascar now has that pro camera system they can go back and review any pit stop they want to see they see all this dish in the right side of the 48 they go back view the pit stops make sure it didn't happen on the racetrack once they saw that it happened on pit road they call the 48 back on pit road to make repairs the penalty for the 48 is they lose all that track position. And they're going to have to do, once the green flag comes out, they'll have to do a pass-through because of manipulating the body. And so that will be their penalty on top of losing all the track position to come in and fix that body work. These are tricks that teams used to play all the time. But now with this, co this pro camera system that NASCAR has, you got to quit playing these tricks because if you do, they're going to catch you. They are focused on each pit stall. Kevin Harvick's out front, Miami. Welcome back. 52 laps into a 267-lap race. Kevin Harvick is out front. Kyle Busch running second. Jeff Gordon is third. And Martin Truex Jr. is fifth. We saw it last year. And a lot of people said, well, there's no way that those four drivers are going to end up running up front and challenging for the win. But that's exactly what's happening once again this year. As they enter the restart zone, we're back to racing. Here comes the 78. Martin Trex Jr. with a great restart. Martin restarted fifth. Now fighting for fourth. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, one and two. Joey Logano is third. Carl Edwards fourth. Martin Trex Jr. fighting for that spot. As Brad Keselowski in the two. Has battled his way back up into the sixth position. Remember, Brad Keselowski was penalized on lap 15 for too many men over the wall. He restarted 37th and already has worked his way up into the top six. And we talked about restarts and how important they were. 
and how the 24 car and Jeff Gordon had not had good restarts. Restarted in third position, has fallen all the way back to eighth, and it all started getting into turn one. That's what we talked about. That's the part they've got to get fixed. You just cannot give up spots on these restarts. And Gordon has fallen all the way back to ninth. Take another look at what happened on this most recent restart. We laid back from the 18 and just didn't get it timed correctly. Now the 78 made the same move we saw Jeff make earlier, but when the 78 made it, it put Jeff in a position where he had a lot of cars around him at one time and it just killed his momentum and he lost a lot of spots between the start finish line and the middle of turns one and two. Started third and now you're running ninth. Jimmy McMurray, Matt Kenseth fighting for the seventh spot. As Kenseth up high. And here comes the 41 of Kurt Busch. So, Rick, what you're seeing here is the 48. The 48, part of that penalty, as you mentioned, had to do a pass through down pit road under green. The field went back to green condition. He rolled down pit road. So he's actually the last car on the lead lap. He returned to the racetrack right behind the four of Kevin Harvick, but had really good speed, fresher tires, was able to get in front of the four. Dave. Rick, our leader hasn't always known how to race this racetrack. A couple years ago, he bounced the 29 car off the wall. He said, I got to stop that. But one of the things, Steve, that he's really learned is backing up the corner. In fact, the team told me that yesterday in practice, when he did that, that they found out when he did it because one run he came in, and they checked the brake rotor temperature. They were 400 degrees less than they were the run before. That's how they knew he was laying off the brakes and letting the car roll in. Yeah, looking at the RPM to try to determine how long they're in the gas down the straightaway. You say it as soon as we get off the plane down here in Miami, Jeff, that this is the racetrack. You have to lift early for these corners. Yeah, Kevin Harvick taught me that. Kevin Harvick is so good about getting in these corners very easy and then going back to the throttle very, very quickly to carry all the speed from the quarter of the way around the corner all the way down these long straightaways. Kevin Harvick is really good on the high line, and a lot of that is because of his patience with the throttle on corner entry. Kevin Harvick separated himself from Kyle Busch by a half a second. And already a different line starting to form. So we talk, when you talked about the 41 car being in a battle with Jeff Gordon earlier, this is an example of using tires to your advantage, Steve. Yeah, the 41 decided to pin on lap 41. They only have about six laps less on their tires than the leaders do. Six green flag laps is all it takes. He restarted 30th, and he's driven all the way to the eighth position, Marty. And on the radio earlier, Jeff Gordon said the tire fall off is amazing. As you guys mentioned, Kurt Busch, a terrific example of that. He's driven, as you said, from 30th to eighth right now, and the lap times are fairly good, and he's not very happy with the race car either. So that shows you how important tires are going to be this evening. As you mentioned, Steve, just six laps for these leaders on their tires, and that's the difference from 30th to eighth. Yeah, Marty, well, unfortunately for the 24, I hear what he's saying about tire fall off, but it might be an issue more with just the 24. Maybe their setup isn't handling the tires as well, or maybe they just don't like to balance on this set of tires because we, we mentioned how he didn't get going great on the restart, but he's continued to fall in. He's all the way back now to the 11th position. The problem is, is it's one thing to have a bad restart and fall back two or three spots inside the top six or seven. But if you get back here in the pack, Marty, it can become so much harder to try to get your way back towards the front with any sort of pit strategy. So tough, Steve, when you lose all that momentum. In fact, under the last caution, Jeff Gordon told Alan Gustafson, that's all I've got, guys. He said it's just cars so tight landing, it's loose off. Alan planned some pretty big changes on this stop. Whenever it does come, pulling a spring rubber, rubber out of the left rear to change the handling of that race car, just way too loose off for Jeff Gordon. Well, we have to remember, Rick, we had that heavy rain shower before the race, cleaning the pavement. Early in the race, the 24 looked great, but as you ride along with the 24, look at the racetrack. It just has a little bit of black lines and smear where the rubber's going down on the racetrack. As that happens, the track loses grip it seems like this change in the racetrack does not agree with the 24 car and that was a close call by the 31 as we see the 98 a little bit of smoke coming out from Ryan Priest right rear tire down and so Ryan Priest going down to the next to the apron out of the line but we're still under green flag condition Priest will take the access road in three and four to get back to pit road as Matt Kenseth looking to get by the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. With more on the 78, here's Kelly. 
Martin Truex Jr. still doesn't quite have the handling that he's looking for in the 78. Here's what he told his crew chief, Cole Pern. It's really weird down at the three. Like, like if the whole, if you told me the whole entire car was bottoming out, I would believe you. I mean, it just it squishes down and just slides like it's an oil four wheel, more loose than tight, but just drift. It's crazy. So you can hear Martin really just looking for more overall grip. He continues to adjust the track bar inside the cockpit to try to help out that handling. Different feels that these drivers are going through. We keep using the word momentum, and the reason we use the word momentum because on this big racetrack with all this banking in the corners, if you don't get through the corner well, it kills your momentum. Watch the three cars in front of Jeff Gordon. Ryan Newman has to check up just for a moment, but that amount of checkup, having to get out of the throttle, enables Jeff Gordon to make a move. So you've got to be able to try to stay in the throttle at all times. Had Ryan Newman stayed in the throttle, they would have, a wreck would have been created, but it is a great example of the, the importance of, of momentum on this racetrack. Kevin Harvick looking to the inside of Jamie McMurray, trying to take that spot back away. McMurray was able to get out in front of him. Gordon trying to grab the spot back. Kevin Harvick's nickname is Happy. 54 laps he led last year. He's been out front 22 already tonight. Kevin Harvick for championship four. Like 71 laps into this race. You look at the most laps led. It's Kevin Harvick. 27 and counting. Presented by Sprint. Celebrate the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship with Sprint. Switch now and save 50% on most of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Visit Sprint.com slash save 50% today. Kevin Harvick. The laps that he has led with Stuart Haas Racing in just 72 starts. Almost as many as the 466 previous starts with Richard Childress Racing. It's been an incredible run for Kevin Harvick when he moved over to Stuart Haas Racing with Rodney Childers as his crew chief. With more, let's go to Marty. Well, back in the field, Rick, Jeff Gordon is in 11th. He has now passed Jamie McMurray. The two had a fierce battle for about six laps. That battle did not make Jeff Gordon very happy. Listen to the radio. There were a couple of situations where Jeff Gordon felt like McMurray drove him a little too rough out on the racetrack and was a little too hard to get around, although Gordon felt like he had a faster car. So, Jeff, my question to you is that part frustration with how poorly Gordon's car is running and also what was going on on the racetrack. Well, I think when you're racing for a championship, I think, you know, you don't really expect people are going to give you a break, but you're hoping they're going to give you a break. And, you know, with you know, lap 75 or 267 and you're racing for a championship and you think you're a little faster, you hope when you get to a guy, maybe he won't race you quite that hard. And let's specifically look at the instances for Jeff Gordon, what he was mentioning with the Jamie McMurray incident. You see the 24 on the very bottom of the racetrack and the one car had a lot of racetrack to use, but he didn't use it. He went got side by side with the 24 which pulls the air off the 24 and makes it really loose a little bit later the 24 caught him and the 24 kind of to me this was a show of displeasure being this high against a race car on the outside groove that's Jeff Gordon telling Jamie McMurray hey look dude I've had enough next time I get to you without saying a word next time I get to you you and I gonna have a problem and so Jeff Gordon running 11th now and the furthest back of any of the championship four Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch running first and second. Martin Trex Jr. is ninth, Jeff Gordon 11th. Longest green flag run today, 23 laps. And as you say that, Rick, we really see this 24 really all the way around the racetrack. The cars are starting to get right up against the wall, like we've mentioned all weekend long. As these tires wear, there's a little more banking up at the top. That's where you're going to want to run. This is the 21 of Ryan Blaney continues to work a groove lower, trying to find a way past the 24. I think the 21's faster. This is part of being a young driver. Ryan Blaney going to run full time for the Wood Brothers next year in this 21 car. Part of the learning curve, figuring out a way to get around the car. Interesting, the relationship between the two running together. Jeff Gordon, uh, over 40, running his last race. Ryan Blaney, a young driver, just 21 years old. 
going to be running full time in the Cup Series next year. The transition from these drivers going from the Jeff Gordon era to who will take over and who will have the next era in NASCAR. And this is a tough spot for Ryan Blaney. You want to pass the 24. Steve just said it. It looks like the 21 is a little quicker than the 24, but you do not want to be the guy that gets to the side of the 24. You've got to be careful. You're racing the guy that's contending for a championship. You have to show respect. You don't want to open the paper in the morning and read, hey, Ryan Blaney took out Jeff Gordon trying to win a championship. Green flag pit stops will be coming up here shortly. We're going to take a quick break. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch running one and two in Miami. NASCAR fans, this is your chance to celebrate the end of another outstanding race season with all the stars of NASCAR in Las Vegas during Champions Week. For more information, visit NASCAR.com slash Vegas. Let's see who's on the move, brought to you by Mobile One. And we'll focus on the 11 of Denny Hamlin. At one point in time, Denny Hamlin was three laps down, running 43rd after a wave around. And the free pass, Denny Hamlin, has made up 21 positions. Stenhouse Jr., 14 spots. David Reagan, 13 spots. With more on the 11, Mike. Well, you know, Rick, I spoke with his crew chief, Dave Rogers, this morning about the season in general. And, of course, they're a little disappointed. They're not among the championship contenders today. But uh, he took full blame. He said, look, look, we beat ourselves in Talladega. He said we uh, made a mistake that led to the roof flap failure. And we need redemption today. But, of course, with the Wiggins clamp failure, well, they're back in the same boat. But they're rallying back. They at one point were down two laps. They've made those laps back and now are making their way toward the front just a little bit loose on exit right now. Meanwhile, his teammate Kyle Busch is a championship contender and as we remember a year ago, Rick, the winner of the championship needed to win the race. Now, Kyle Busch running second right now has his eyes on the leader, Kevin Harvick. Doesn't want him to get out of reach, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be bypassed for that position and lose striking distance. So his spotter, Tony Hirschman Jr., giving him play-by-play -play of where Joey Logano is running, making sure he knows exactly where he's coming from and where he's gaining ground. It took a win a year ago by Kevin Harvick. He was in two must-win situations to end the 2014 season. At Phoenix, he had to win to advance into the championship four. And then at Homestead, he had to beat Ryan Newman, who finished second in the last race of the season. He was able to do both. Now leading once again as we come to the season's end. Jeff Gordon running 12, had this to say about his car moments ago. See Jeff Gordon's running 12th, Rick. It might not be flashy, but as we watch this 24 going around here, Jeff Burton and I were just having the conversation that he's fighting. Denny Hamlin's got by him on new tires, but he's held off the 21. He's held off the three of Austin Dillon. It might not seem flashy for all this battle back in 12th, but that's what the 24 has to do. Give the crew chief feedback and continue to battle. Even in 12th, you have to go for every position you can get, Jeff. Yeah, no question. You have to remain in the fight. You cannot lay down. We heard Kevin Harvick talk about it last year that Tony Stewart told him fight all night long, no matter what. And Jeff Gordon right now continue to fight. He could have laid down a little bit and given up a spot to Dylan Blaney McMurray, but he didn't. It's a huge difference coming on pit road running 12th versus running 15th. So credit Jeff Gordon for continuing the fight. Joey Logano has been able to get by Kyle Busch for the second spot now. And Rick, what's coming? Green flag pit stops. You talk about the opportunity of making mistakes. It definitely gets amplified as we see our first championship contender make a stop at 78 on pit road. And Kelly. Martin Truex Jr. said he was really starting to struggle with this car towards the end of the run. They were just looking for more overall grip. They talked about taking a Packer out of both fronts here. They're just looking for more downforce on this car. First half of the run needs to be stronger. They felt like their times leveled out in the second half of that run. They just need to have better takeoff speed for the 78. Four tires and Sunoco fuel as well for Martin Truex Jr. And more cars on their way in. The 18 of Kyle Busch also making his way to his pit stall. Mike. 
And Kyle Busch, Rick, is saying he's been a little bit tight, a little bit edgy on the gas. They're planning a four-tire stop and an air pressure adjustment. The team, which has predominantly been with Kyle Busch since 2008, some in the Xfinity Series, some in the Cup Series, know exactly what they're doing here. Four-tire change, left sides now, as they complete their service really quick. He's away. Since the four car was last on pit road on lap 32, he grabbed the lead. He's held on to it. This run, he said, the front needs to turn a little bit better on entry. I'm still too loose off of the corner. So the Goodyear tires going on have an air pressure adjustment. He'll get a full load of Sunoco fuel, and he leaves pit road. And riding along with Jeff Gordon as he's making his way to his pit stall. Rick, we heard the comments from Jeff Gordon, and they said the car just not very good right now. It's too tight, too loose off, too tight into the corner. They're going to pull the spring rubber out of the left rear. It's going to take a little bit more time. Tape on the grill, wedge in. You see the tape going on right now, and the four fresh Goodyear tires. See if all those changes help Jeff Gordon or not. And an impressive stop for the 24 team. As they come out just behind the 21 of Ryan Blaney, making those changes, having to pull things out uh, of that left rear. Yeah, that was a very efficient stop to remove a spring rubber. My concern is that the 24 was the last of our championship contenders to come to pit road. With new tires being worth so much here at Homestead, Miami, you have to be careful. One extra lap could be two, two and a half, up to three seconds on the racetrack. As they're cycling through the green flag pit stops, Joey Logano scored as the race leader in front of Kyle Busch. Alex Bowman, who still has not come to pit road, running third. Kevin Harvick, fourth. When Kyle Busch came to pit road in front of Kevin Harvick, that gave him an opportunity to take away that spot on the track. That's so Logano's out front, Kyle Busch running second, Harvick's two spots back. And that's really one lap. Kyle Busch came to pit road on lap 90. Kevin Harvick came to pit road at lap 91. Kyle was about a second and a half back. You, you lose much more than a second and a half. These cars are running two, two and a half, up to three seconds off at the end of a fuel run. One lap, three seconds, Kyle Busch ends up the leader. Joey Logano is front of the field, but it's Kyle Busch leading the championship four. From a producer of The Office comes the new comedy Superstore. You've shopped there, maybe you've even worked there. Superstore, special preview on Monday, November 30th, after The Voice on NBC. Four championship contenders, Kyle Busch runs second, Kevin Harvick is third. Martin Trex Jr. ninth, outside the top 10, Jeff Gordon running 13th. Dave, what's happening with Kevin Harvick? He lost a couple of positions, Rick, for something that wasn't working, but it's not on his race car. Listen. Whatever mark he used to turn on to pit road is no longer there. Jeff, I think you've been on the track in your Toyota Camry this weekend. Getting on pit road here is tough anyway, and if your mark goes away, like perhaps not a lit light, that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. All these drivers practice getting on pit road on Friday and Saturday. You pick something on the racetrack where you know you can drive as hard as you can. When you get to that point, you start to brake to get on pit road. This light is out, so Kevin Harvick could not see it. So he didn't know where to go. So we saw, we documented that he lost a spot or two spots on pit road. That was because he did, of pitting a little bit later, but also he did not get onto pit road as fast as he could have because he could not find that light. Here was more communication from the four team. I think I don't know, I know what to do on that pit road. Parker just talking, start talking all the way through, and I'll just tell him because really ain't nothing to mark him by. So now, so now the spotter has got to find that light. He's got to find that light, and they've got to find a way to communicate. He's got to say, 10 car lengths, five car lengths, you're there. And then Harvick's got to trust him if he wants to max out his entry pit road speed. And that's so important under these green flag stops. But that's going to take a lot of trust. And, and you could make a mistake. If you do it wrong, you're going to go too fast on pit road, and you're going to get caught speeding, and you're going to have a penalty. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be interesting to see how this team works with this issue. With more on the 24, let's go to Marty. 
Rick Jeff Gordon back in 13th and part of the handling woes especially at the end of the run may have been the fact that the right rear tire for Jeff Gordon was going down towards the end of that run. Alan Gustin just told him on the radio that the right rear had started to go down. Jeff radioed them and said yep I felt that a couple of laps before we came in. Steve how much can that change the changes they made on the car and affect it on this run as well. Marty that's the absolute biggest concern for Alan Gustafson right now is how long was that right rear tire going down. Is that what we adjusted for? Did we pull that left rear spring rubber under green when really we needed it in the race car? This is very difficult for a crew chief and a driver. You're trying to work on your race car with all known variables. As soon as you have a tire going down you don't know about, you can't take those chassis changes back. You're committed, especially pulling a spring rubber. It's out of the spring. There perhaps is another one there you could push in, but that's just going to take more time on the next pit stop. And when you're making, making these changes throughout the race, Steve, you're learning. You're, you're making a change and you say, okay, here's what it did to the car. You, you scrap this. You learn absolutely nothing by making this change, which means the next stop, you're just trying to get back to a center. And then the next stop is when you'll start to learn. So it hurts you right now, but it also has an effect on you later in the race. You were given up an opportunity to learn something about what makes your race car better. That's why practice is so important for these teams because they try to get as close to perfectly balanced as they can, but then still build in the adjustability to the cars. Yeah, and that adjustability, Alan Gustin pulled a spring rubber. All that is is a tuning tool. It's physically a piece of rubber material that goes in the coils of a spring. You've seen the spring in your ballpoint pen. As you compress it, it compresses. Those are in the back of this race car. As they compress, they have a certain rate. You put a little piece of rubber in there, makes that spring harder to compress. Alan Gustafson pulled it out of the left rear spring, trying to make that spring softer to get that 24 car to turn the middle of the corner. Now let's go to Kelly. Well, the 78 team of Martin Truex Jr. took Packers out of both fronts on that car on that last pit stop as well, but Martin Truex still just not happy. He said he's sliding everywhere, can't find anything. He said, I feel like I need to carry momentum to be fast, but I just can't. He's been lowering the track bar, looking for more grip. Past 100 laps, completes in this race with 160 to go and Martin Truex Jr. right in the middle of the championship hunt with Kyle Busch running second Kevin Harvick third but Truex down there in ninth. And one thing Kelly just mentioned is a word that is so hard to find grip. It's easy for a crew chief to make a car tighter. It's easier to make a car looser. It is very difficult when you just lack grip. When you can't tell your crew chief, if you make me tighter, I'll go faster. If you make me looser, I'll go faster. You know how it is, Jeff. Sometimes the car in front of you is faster. You just don't, it, it's not a handling thing. You just don't have that speed. You don't have that grip. And pulling Packers out of both fronts under a green flag stop, that is not a good sign that your car is where you need it to be. That's a lengthy change. That's not something you want to have to do under a green flag stop. When Kyle, it seems to be dialed in is the one out front, Joey Logano. Won six races in 2015. We'd like to end on a high note. He's out front of the championship four. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by the new 2016 Ford Escape. Be unstoppable. Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And by Diet Mountain Dew. Do the do. 51 came onto pit road moments ago. That's Justin Allgaier behind the wheel. Smoke rolling out the back and a lot of damage on the right side of that car. See the right rear tire is flat. Uh, he also has has significant damage on the right side. But I think I think he had to pit. I think he got in the wall earlier. But the right rear tire something cut the right rear tire. And running right up against the wall. Let's go through the field. We'll start with Mike Massaro. And talking with Joey Logano's crew chief this morning, he said the practice plan was to try to make his car as versatile as possible. Now, conventionary wisdom says run up toward the wall. That's where the most grip is. That's where the speed is. But Todd Gordon wanted this car to be able to run the middle and the bottom. Joey Logano's been able to do that throughout the course of the day as he ducks down underneath the car towards the apron here, showing he can run that line. He's been saying he's a little bit snug, but otherwise pretty good. Meanwhile, championship contender Kyle Busch told me after winning the Brickyard earlier this summer, completing a three-race stretch, and one, once he won three in a row, he said he's never been this confident. He said maybe the only other time was 2008 when he won eight races in a row. He felt that that time in August he could compete for this championship, improving it again here, Dave. 
because he had to be conservative on that last entry to pit road. Kevin Harvick lost not only the lead, but he lost the championship position. And right now, the four car is not handling well. He's losing the front all the way through the center, and he's loose off. Marty? Dave Carl Edwards having a strong effort here in Miami, running in fourth right now. You know, he was the first man to miss the championship four by just five points after Phoenix. I talked to him before the race. I said, are you over that? He said, sort of, not really, but I would love to have been competing in that final four here, Kelly. Kyle Larson won the Xfinity Series race last night. He said, it's pretty cool that I got a win on Jeff Gordon's last weekend. He started 23rd, gained track position by staying out under caution, but he got into the wall a few laps ago, and now he said the 42 is getting tight, Dave. The two of Brad Keselowski recovering from a penalty earlier. Right now is two loose on the entry and two loose off. So that car not handling well for him. Behind him, the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Welcome back. He is back from a two-race suspension, and his team said very glad to have him. They knew Matt wouldn't forget how to be fast. He's running in the top ten here, Marty. David, after that press and run up through the field for Kurt Busch earlier, he settled in right about the eighth position right here. The car a little bit too tight in the middle of the corner. I asked Tony Gibson, his crew chief, to assess the season for the scene. He said, considering Kurt missed three races at the beginning of the year and we almost made the final four, I'm really happy, Kelly. When asked who his favorite driver as a kid was, Martin Truex Jr. said Dale Earnhardt hands down. Well, he could become the first single car team to win a Sprint Cup championship since Earnhardt did it back in 1994 with Richard Childress Racing. They've been struggling to find the handling on this car. But moments ago, Martin said simply it's better. Mike? Kelly, what a recovery it has been for the 11 team and Denny Hamlin. After having a problem that put them in the garage for a couple of laps, they've recovered and are now running inside the top 10, believe it or not. He feels like he's got a very fast and balanced race car right now, Marty. Last year in Miami, Ryan Newman, Mike, came here with a shot to win the championship. Tonight, he does not have that shot. Same as the last two runs for that 31 car of Ryan Newman. Too tight in the middle, too loose off the corner. They just cannot get that out of the race car for that 31 team. For Jeff Gordon, championship contender today he just told the team a moment ago it just does not feel good I can tell you that Alan Gustin came back on the radio said your times are as good as the four I know you're not happy with it but hang in there he said you're right it feels terrible right now with the way we're handling how about the run for Ryan Blaney we mentioned a moment ago they'll be full time in 2016 in this 21 car he told me earlier today I love that he said the toughest part about this year is running part time because we don't get that regular rhythm it's going to be nice to have that in 2016 Dave Jamie McMurray qualified 22nd Marty but that wasn't indicative of the speed in the race car since the start of the race he's move forward run in the top 15 for most of the evening and on that last stop he is just a little bit tight in the middle loose off Kelly Trevor Bain in the 16 looking for a bright spot this season and it might come right here in the finale they've gained a lot of track position by staying out under a caution right now Trevor saying that he's a little bit tighter starting this run hoping to get better Dave Austin Dillon may have had the most fun of any driver in the last run he went from 25th to 13th past 12 cars and the car was just a little bit loose when he came to pit road for adjustments Mike AJ Allmendinger running 17th although he has said he's not been able to run the top line the whole race and the balance of the car has been swinging from tight to loose and it's a little bit on edge having difficulty getting back to the throttle Kelly. Greg Biffle once won three straight races here at Homestead Miami Speedway it has not been the season they were hoping for as he missed the chase but I spoke with him moments before the start of this one he said he was really looking forward to 2016 Mike. Jimmy Johnson sitting on win number 75 after his Texas victory, but has certainly had some momentum after leading several laps last week in Phoenix. Just one win shy of tying a record set by Dale Earnhardt with 76 wins. He's trying to recover from a penalty earlier in the race, right now running 19th. Rick? Those are all of the lead lap cars, and he's about to go a lap down. Great job through the field there, brought to us by Nationwide. Joy Logano. Closing in on the back bumper of Jimmy Johnson. Logano, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, the top three. Kyle Busch, 1.6 seconds behind Logano, but he's out in front of the championship four. Kyle Busch leading the championship of the final race. A reminder, fans, Sprint can save you 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. No gimmicks, no tricks, no catch. Joey Logano in front of Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, and Kevin Harvick running fourth. And Kevin Harvick's been in a tough battle with Carl Edwards, trying to keep Carl behind him. And 
Kyle Larson has got the outside working now. He had a great run through the middle in three and four, made it three wide, get into turn one. Clears both Carl and Kevin right in the middle one and two. This is when we think Kyle Larson should start to shine. We keep waiting for it to happen because we know how good he is running right around the top. Tires are worn out. This is when we think Kyle can start making a drive to the front. Longest green flag run now, 77 laps. Kyle Larson was last on pit road on lap 90. 92 for Larson, 90 for Joey Logano. Gone almost 40 laps now since they were on pit road. In Harvick back in the fourth spot. Dave. Rick, remember he lost the lead because he couldn't get aggressively to pit road and they worked on his race car. This was the result. He just radioed the team and said it's like the gas pedal is ice. Rodney radioed back to him and said, I think I screwed up on air pressure. They're waiting for the next stop to make the four car better. And they're closing in on that stop. Again, the pit window anywhere from 55 to 57 laps. And as you both have mentioned, the fall off of the tires is so severe. Would we see Jeff Gordon coming to pit road maybe a lap or two before that window opens up for This him? is going to be the tough decision for these championship crew chiefs because coming to pit road early is a risk versus reward battle. You definitely want to come in, get adjustments, get fresh tires, but one ill-timed caution could change the whole course of the day. If I'm the 24 car, I'm scanning Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex. When I hear either of those three pit, I pit the same lap. You, not a lap after, the same lap. Marty. Rick, a moment ago, Jeff Gordon was running 13th. And remember, we told you his car was, quote, terrible. Well, now things are looking a little more positive on the 2014. Here was Jeff on the radio a moment ago. I found a little stuff in here. I need better drive on. Yeah, you found a lot. You're doing awesome. And Jeff, it's amazing. Even a guy who's won 93 races and all the championships Jeff Gordon has won, you're constantly learning as a race car driver, aren't you? Every single lap, you have to max out the potential of your race car, which means you have to be constantly looking for places to put your race car. How far do you drive in the corner? When do you get in a throttle? Where is your car the best? And that changes as your car changes. Jeff Gordon's lap times are not bad right now. They're about a fifth, sixth place car. So he has found a way to take the car that he isn't exactly happy with, put it in a position that he wants it to be in, and drive it the way it needs to be driven, and find some lap time. Slow on the racetrack, the 10 of Danica Patrick making her way onto pit road. Danica Patrick's last run with GoDaddy is the sponsor. Well, as these tires get old, one car that has found a ton of speed is the 42 of Kyle Larson. You're not going to hear this said very much in a one and a half mile track, but he is up to a half of second faster than the leaders. Five tenths of a second each lap. He has gone from almost an eight second gap to the lead of Joey Logano in just four or five laps has cut that down to five seconds. We saw this in yesterday's Xfinity race. He won this race with about seven to go. He was probably 30 car lengths behind Austin Dillon. We said, hey, this race is over. Austin's going to drive away. He found a way to go to the top of the racetrack, and he mowed him down. Caught him in about three laps, and that's what he's doing right now. He is exceptionally fast. Joey Logano has led the most laps, 63 now, as we've passed the halfway point. Look at the last lap times. The speeds. Logano out in front, turning the fastest lap. Kyle Larson second fastest, Matt Kenza third fastest. Kyle Larson's lap, that was in traffic. He had a car in front of him, that slowed his momentum down. So even in traffic, he was still able to be second fastest. Coming up on Greg Biffle, now only 17 cars on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson has gone down a lap. Brad Keselowski is running in the 17th position. And some green flag pit stops are taking place. One of those is the two of Brad Keselowski, was just on pit road. And that's what happens. As soon as the first car decides it's time to come to pit road, you see Martin Truex Jr. All right, I'm going to come early, get those new tires, try to get an advantage, Kelly. Is he still struggling to get the handling on the 78 car? He said he was loose getting into the corner, but then tight on. 
on load up, they're going to take more Packer out of the front of this car. Martin said he could drive it at about 98% and get a decent lap. You see it's going to be four fresh your tires, and you see the flames go up there as they were refused, fueling the car. And those flames continue to burn as the 78 drives off. And a little bit of fuel still on that opening as we go down to Dave. Spotter Tim Fidewa talked him all the way around the corner, helped him be aggressively onto pit road. He'll get a four tire change and also an air pressure adjustment of those Goodyear tires back to what he had before, full of Sunoco fuel. An interesting call by Alan Gustafson. Jeff Gordon was going to pit in five laps. As soon as the 78 and the four pitted, they called the 24 to pit road. We talked about them pitting late in the cycle earlier. They pit early in the cycle this time. It's going to be four tires for Jeff Gordon after he found a little something. We heard that. And also fuel for Jeff Gordon. The only adjustment this time, air pressure and tape on the nose. That's it. You see the four tires going on. The tape on the nose going on 12.3 on the stop for Jeff Gordon. Four tires, 18 gallons of fuel in 12 seconds. Very impressive once again. And the 18 of Kyle Busch now on pit road as well. Kyle was scored the race leader as these green flag pit stops continue to cycle through. Kyle headed toward Mike Massaro. And Rick, Kyle's been real happy with the race car. The only thing he has said so far is that he's searching for rear grip. We're going to pay real close attention to this pit stop because all night long, they've not touched the chassis once. Only air pressure adjustment. They go to work on the right side there. They've had clean stops throughout the night. They do have the wrench this time. It goes in the left side, a left side wedge adjustment. It would appear being planned. And now the wrench gets turned. A good stop for the 18, Kelly. Mike, you saw that fire on the 78 car, Martin Truex Jr. as they were refueling and the gas man had to back away. Well, just moments ago, Cole Colburn saying we're probably not going to be full here. So if this race continues to go green, it could force their hands to pit earlier than they would want. Unfortunate for the 78 team again. You see right here, there's a little bit of spill from the first can and the sparks from the lug nut is normally what happens. So as he starts hitting lug nuts to remove the left rear tire, the sparks from that lug nut ignite the fuel that was on the ground. You see right here, it starts on the ground, goes up towards the car. The fuel man does absolutely the wise thing, backs away, does the, his really his only option at this point, a very scary situation. Luckily, the fire wasn't bigger, but the big concern now that everyone's safe is the fuel they were able to get in the 78 car. How much was it? They're going to have to go into the calculations to try to figure out a number. Here was the communications on the radio after that fire. Those two guys don't get too animated about much. They had some fire. Yep, we're, we're probably not full. There was an extra man that jumped over the wall for the 18 team to take the tear off off of the windshield. NASCAR will approve that. They'll ask if they can have an extra person to service either the windshield or the driver and NASCAR would approve that he didn't do any adjustments to the car just took that tear off off the windshield. Yeah, another smart move by the fuel man on the 78 was he turned the fuel can up rather than turning it down so the fuel ran down rather than coming back out but to watch the 78 here getting on the outside of the 46 46 got way up the racetrack almost got into the side of 78 watch it right here very close call. Yeah, Rick, one thing they've changed this oh, year is you're allowed right. to have that extra fuel or that extra crew member to service the driver at any point during this season. Carl Edwards is out in front. Kyle Busch leading the championship four. We look at Kyle Busch's best finish in the points, fourth back in 2013, presented by Sprint. And right now, he is running out front of the championship four in position to win the title. Celebrate the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship with Sprint, which now can save 50% on most of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Visit Sprint.com slash save 50% today as the caution has now come out for the fifth time. Debris on the backstretch after green flag pit stop cycled through. Joy Logano was back out front, but you see the debris right up against the wall. Huge break, huge break for the 78. Remember, Rick, we didn't think that car was full of fuel. He needed a caution before the last green or the next green flag pit stop. So this caution is a big break for them. You saw the 88 involved in the accident earlier. It's hard to make these repairs. You're going to see this is a big piece of debris that blows off the right rear quarter panel of the 88. Bounces off Tony Stewart's car. 
And right there in the groove. Martin Trucks Jr., you mentioned the issues on pit road. He has had numerous issues over the past few races. This is Kansas, or excuse me, Charlotte. Yeah, Jeff, you've been very vocal about the 78 pit crew being a concern of yours coming in here, and I agree. The fuel can barely slides forward and goes just to the yellow line, almost out of the pit box, which would have been a penalty. Yeah, that was a lucky break. And then in Kansas, see the tire rolling, uncontrolled tire. That was a penalty. Then at Talladega, more issues again. You see the see the tire that circled. And remember, the problem with this pit stop is he lost the draft because of it. That was under green. And then tonight here in the season finale, a spark catches the fuel on fire. They don't get the car full. Luckily, it looks like they're going to get away from get away with this issue because this caution saved them from having to pit in extra time. Yeah, poor pit stops put these guys in position several times where they had to really dig to be able to move into this last championship round. And you cannot have those mistakes at this point. Especially as we come to the season finale. Mark Truex Jr. has been so strong, especially to start the 2015 season. They've got the win at Pocono. As we are seeing Logano, Kyle Busch, Keselowski, all the lead lap cars on pit road, Dave. Including fifth place Kevin Harvick. He said it was better that run, especially managing the top, but still a little loose. Quarter round of wedge out of the right rear, four tires and fuel, Kelly. So it's just the caution that the 78 team needed. They've been making big adjustments, and that time Martin said it took off all right. We'll see how it goes from here. You see it's going to be a four-tire change. It's an Oco Field for the 78, Marty. Jeff Gordon said the car took off better, but I'm still just so loose on exit half round of the right rear and wedge. That should tighten up that 24 car and four fresh good tires, Mike. Kyle Busch real happy with the balance of the race car. Said it took off really good. A four tire change, no adjustments. Race off pit road, top three positions stay the same. Kevin Harvick gained a spot. Kyle Larson lost one. Denny Hamlin also gaining spots. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Bank of America. Life's better when we're connected. Here at Homestead Miami Speedway, Bank of America provided a unique experience for veterans at the track with a meet and greet with Hendrick Motorsports driver Casey Kane. The NASCAR Troops at the Track program presented by Bank of America has provided thousands of troops with VIP experiences since its inception. Great opportunity that is for our servicemen and women and great for Casey Kane to spend that time with them. Welcome back to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Ford EcoBoost 400. Homestead Miami Speedway after a delay of a little over an hour and 20 minutes. We have completed 153 of the 267 laps. Mike. Well, Rick, in the midst of a championship battle, every detail is critical. So you can imagine the frustration of Adam Stevens knowing that he's having difficulty understanding his driver over the radio. Wait till you get to the front stretch. I can't hear a thing with these stupid radios. I took off really good, but I was at three seven. My end track bar. And then after the win, after I got on the top, I put that. So as you can hear, there's static. It's breaking up. Adam followed up that conversation by just simply saying, all right, just tell me, are you loose or are you tight? And he didn't even get an answer on that on that last pit stop. They didn't make any adjustments consequently. But Steve, you've been a guy up on that box. Uh, you could probably tell us just how frustrating that could be. Well, it's very frustrating because you know you're not going to give your driver the best performance from a crew chief standpoint. You can't make the car better. You can't make the right adjustments. Coming up to the restart zone, Carl Edwards stayed out. Joey Logano will be on the inside. As they're in the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. Three wide for the lead. Here comes Kyle Busch. Also a lucky break for the 48 team of Jimmy Johnson. They were able to stay on the lead lap. Until the 19 car on the bottom of the racetrack. He's so much slower than everybody else because he didn't pit. And he really, really bottled up Martin Truex Jr. He lost a lot of spots because of that. Martin Truex Jr. is running 12, now 11 as he's been able to get by Carl Edwards as Edwards continues to drop like a rock. 
Edwards all the way back to 12th after starting up front. Kevin Harvick taking second away from Brad Keselowski. It's amazing to me how you tell these teams if you win this race, you're going to win a championship, and they find a way to raise their stake. I mean, they find a way to be better. It's just amazing to me. I always thought I'm doing the most I can do. I can't do anything else. But this has proven to me when there's more on the line, the drivers, the teams, everybody tries to find, and they do find a better way of doing things. Two of our championship contenders running first and second. Yeah, Jeff, you mentioned that 19 chose to stay out with only five or six laps on his tires, but the tires are worth so much here. He instantly falls back in the pack on that last restart. And we talk about our championship contenders, how they're on the racetrack with every other car, the 78 of Martin Truex here on the inside of Jimmy Johnson, trying to carry momentum down into turn one on new tires. The bottom is the preferred lane. Well, the 19 chooses to go here. You see the 78 give him a little shot, but he has to get the, seven, the 78 has to get out of the gas, hurts his momentum. He loses a spot to the 48 and the 24, his championship or a uh, championship contender with Jeff Gordon. Jeff, Jeff Gordon just in front with Martin Truex Jr. Again, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick running one and two, the other two championship four contenders. And Jeff, you made a, a great point there. How they're able to raise their level of competition when we come to the last race back in 2011 I was amazed at how Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards battled lap after lap after lap Tony Stewart leading the race Carl Edwards running second at the end of that race they were tied in points as we see Martin Trex Jr. making the pass on Jeff Gordon and Gordon fighting back on the outside Marty it's impressive Rick what Jeff Gordon is doing with that race car he just said a couple laps into this run I am absolutely wrecking from the middle of the corner off Steve you know as a crew chief part of your job is psychologist right so Alan Gustafson on the radio just convincing Jeff Gordon survived the early part of this run because late in the run that 24 car is pretty good Marty you have to be a psychologist because you have all the information you have timing and scoring. You have the information from all the other race cars. All Jeff Gordon has is the information out of his windshield and in his mirror. He only knows how his car is driving compared to the cars around it. You know how his lap times truly compare to the leader. And they continue to race for position. Fighting for that 10th spot. Jeff Gordon has it. Martin Trex Jr. trying to take it away on the bottom of the track. point earlier in the race all four of the championship four in the top five now these two trying to stay in the top ten as Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick continue to run one and two Kyle Busch has now led he so tight. He uh, I can't answer that he's still there uh you heard Mark Truex, why is he running me so tight? A couple laps ago, the 24 chose to be right on the right side door of the 78. We heard Jeff Gordon get upset with Jamie McMurray early on the race for that. He's using that now to try to hold the 78 up. Kyle Busch has led 25 laps of the race, but he's been in front of his other competitors for 100 laps tonight. Tomorrow, Dan Patrick will talk with the Sprint Cup Series champion. You don't want to miss the Dan Patrick Show weekday mornings, 9 to noon on NBCSN. Caution is out for the sixth time. It was Josh Wise who brought the caution out as they have damage to the right side of that car. Look back at the replay. C32 has already made contact with the wall. Very hard contact. See how much the, the tires are rubbing the fenders. Entire right side of the car has been flattened out, so very hard contact. Fresh tires and a little bit of body work, and they'll send Josh Weiss back out to the track. They were last on pit road on lap 151. You both have talked about how important tires are. Is 16 laps enough tires that everyone comes in for four tires? Absolutely. Everyone. Easy decision. We even agreed. That's. Maybe the second time this year. I'm glad that it's happening. And Kyle Busch in front of Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, and it's Busch that leads them on to pit road, Dave. Third place, Kevin Harvick said that run, it was terrible. It won't turn, it has no rear grip on exit, so it'll be a wedge adjustment on both sides. Phyllis Sunoco fuel and four tires, Cal. 
Martin Trex Jr. a little looser and could use some more drive off. It's going to be two tires right side only for the 78. Marty. Jeff Gordon said, honestly, I don't know how we're going to work on this car. It's so loose to the start, and then it swings tight so quickly. They debated on pulling the spring rubber and decided against that, Mike. Adam Stevens has called for only two chassis adjustments all night long. They've been the same ones, working on the left side wedge adjustment, a four tire change in fuel for Kyle Busch. And the race off pit road is Martin Truex Jr. He tries the two tire stop once again. Brad Kozlowski, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, the next championship four contenders as we go NASCAR nonstop. Welcome back to Miami here with Cole Pern, crew chief on the 78. You made the second uh, decision for two tires only. Why now? Uh, we we're just kind of meddling around there, not really going anywhere, and it's kind of hard to pass and slick. So I thought we'd take a stab at it, maybe get another 10 lap run or something like that. We can jump five, six spots if we can hold on here. So really uh, just trying to do something to you know, gain some track position. All right, we'll see what this car can do now in clean air, Rick. Thanks, Kelly. We want to take a look at tonight's Mobile One performance factors, and it has to be willing to gamble. We saw it early in the race. Cole Pern and Martin Truex Jr. decided to take two tires. They do it again here. Jeff, I love the gamble. They're here to win a championship. They won't do that for 10th. They have to find a way to get themselves to the front. And I love the fact the crew chief and the driver, they're in on this thing together. He like Truex likes to call the Pern mate. He's going to go drive the car the best he can. They're going to do it. They're either going to win it or lose it, but they're going to do it together. Martin Truex Jr. just changing two tires. Brad Keselowski will be on the inside. Truex Jr. choosing the outside line behind him. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick, three of the championship four in the top four. Back in the restart zone, back under green. Two by two as they enter one and two. Kozlowski out front. How long can Martin Truex Jr. hang on to this position? Kyle Busch looked high, then ducked low, trying to take second away from Truex as they go into one. And remember Cole Pern's theory here. He just needs a short run, five or six laps, just long enough that everybody thinks they need to cut for tires. He was running 10th. If he could just fall back to fifth or sixth before the caution comes out, this will be a positive game for the 78. And what does this do to Jeff Gordon? Jeff Gordon is back running in 11th. He's watching the three guys that he's racing fight amongst themselves, but Jeff has not found a way to get into the fight. Can they answer and get back up? Kyle Busch once again in front of his competition. Busch running second to the field, but in front of the other three championship four. Kyle Busch, Martin Trex Jr., Kevin Harvick. Will it level out for Martin Trex Jr.? Can he hang on to third, even with just two new tires? Martin had a big wiggle in the middle of three and four, had to chase the car off the racetrack. Lost his momentum now the four of Kevin Harvick's making a move. Harvick trying to take third away. He gets third, and now will set his sights back on Kyle Busch. Much like we talked about Jeff Gordon early in the race when his car wasn't driving the way he wanted to. This he dug in. He found a way to hold spots. That's what Martin Truex has got to do right now. He has had a disadvantage, no doubt, with these tires. But as Steve just explained, if he can stay six, seven, eight, it's still a game for Martin Truex and his team. This is what the 78 wants to see as well. He wants to see the two cars in his mirror battle. I thought the 22 and the 41 would get side by side. They didn't, although the 78 continues to hold his own pretty well for the older left side tires. I think as we get longer into the run, Jeff, the tires will equalize a little bit more and his disadvantage will somewhat go away. Well, I think too, I think as it, as it starts to wear out and as he has to move up the racetrack, then that is an advantage for Martin Truex Jr. as well. He loves running right up against the wall. Like we talked about Kyle Larson early in the race, Martin Truex Jr. is very much the same. They really enjoy running the very, very, very high line. 91 laps to go to determine a champion. Kurt Busch has been able to get by Martin Trex Jr. 
Now Joey Logano also working the inside line. Logano taking advantage of the shorter way around the track and he will get in front of the 78. Slide up in front of Martin Truex Jr. Brad Keselowski Logano's teammate out in front. Kyle Busch running second Kevin Harvick is third. And now that we're six laps into the run you're going to start to see the risk of this call Rick as the 78 falls back to six looking at seven. He's still OK but if this run does go green this 78 will have to make a decision because they will continue to lose time. He'll have to perhaps short pit come maybe five or ten laps before he needs fuel. Even if that happens, though, Steve, they had to do something. They haven't I love shown the, call. the speed. They have not shown the speed to win a championship. So you have to do something. You have to get off sequence, do something different to try to steal some track position. Then maybe you do get the magic chassis adjustment. Maybe you do something with air pressure where you can run against Kevin Harvick and run against Kyle Busch. But you first have to get there. The most important thing to being a good crew chief is you have to be honest with yourself, honest with your driver, assess the situation. This 78 has yet to show the speed to beat the 18 and the 4. So how are they going to do it? This was a chassis call. Still out front of the field is Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch running second, Kevin Harvick in third. A reminder, football night in America is still to come on NBC. We stay here with racing 88 laps to go the championship for Kyle Busch Kevin Harvick Truex Junior Jeff Gordon in his final race in the Sprint Cup Series running for a title whichever one of the four finishes in front of the others will be the 2015 Sprint Cup Series champion right now the advantage is going to Kyle Busch he's been in front of the other three over a hundred laps already tonight. Brad Keselowski the race leader With the most recent caution Brad Keselowski was able to come to pit road get four tires those four fresh tires enabled him to take the lead Martin Truex Junior who tried strategy to stay up front changing just two tires has fallen back now Truex Junior back to seventh yeah, and as we watch Martin Truex Junior battle on those two tires and seventh, trying to hold up. And we look towards the front of the pack Kyle Busch running second Kevin Harvick running third running very different lines the 18 trying to protect his position the four of Kevin Harvick has found some speed he's only about two car lengths behind right up to the 18's bumper here in the middle of three and four closing the gap now it's for the championship whichever one of the four finish in front of the others wins the title Kevin Harvick the defending series champion working the high line trying to go back to back that was a very interesting groove Jeff the four entered in the middle of the racetrack and brought it up to the high line in the middle of the corner I've yet to see that this weekend and now a half a line below the 18 is where the four ran through the center of the turn the 18 strategy is to take away the line that Kevin Harvick wants if Kevin Harvick wants the top you've got to go to the top to take away that line that Kevin Harvick has to respond to that he's got to try to guess where Kyle Busch is going to go if Kyle does go to the bottom Kevin needs to jump to the top if Kyle goes to the top then Kevin can maybe run to the bottom so you have to try to guess on corner entry where the 18 is going to be these two up front of the championship for Kyle Busch looking for his first ever championship in the Sprint Cup Series as we go NASCAR nonstop. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything we learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Shop for all 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion gear and much more. Visit NASCAR.com slash champ today a champ will de be determined between Kyle Busch Kevin Harvick Jeff Gordon and Martin Truex Jr. and up against the wall you heard 
the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. but the 42 of Kyle Larson has been the car on the move and he has been running within a foot of the wall and doesn't leave it. And when we talk about the high side Rick it's one thing to get up right against the wall in the middle of a corner but on corner entry right here. The 42 never leaves the wall. We see the four other cars turn in, get away from the wall a little bit, then drift up towards it and ride the wall on exit. But watch here into turn one, how the 42 never even leaves. He's within two feet of the wall, even on corner entry. And the reason this works is because now his angle of attack through the middle of the corner is right. He doesn't have to drive into the corner and move up to the wall. He's already against the wall. That enables him to go to the throttle. And I want you to think about something one second. When you pull into, when you pull into your garage, tonight right you put, leave your garage tomorrow and you, you feel like you're going to hit the, the door the <laughs> right side door you can't see over there very well he is running near 200 miles an hour on corner entry right against the wall and that he trusts his car so much he trusts himself so much we don't see anybody else in the series that does this on corner entry consistently as well as Kyle Larson does an incredible run for Kyle Larson as he runs fifth let's take a Update from our championship four. We start with Mike Massaro. Well, Rick, over the last couple of stops on pit road, the 18 team has made consecutive left side wedge adjustments. The last one, however, may have been too much. Kyle said the car isn't quite as good this run. Seems to be rolling over on the right rear, and the right rear is just not as attached as it was in the previous run. Expect them to go back on that adjustment next time, Dave. Kevin Harvick does not have a speedometer or a stopwatch in his race car, so when he does something good as far as the line of the track goes, He's told by his crew chief the last couple laps ago Rodney Childress was impressed by a line that Kevin took it was three tenths better he said you might want to try that again Marty Dave Jeff Gordon is in ninth he says we're just getting hammered in the early part of this run but middle to the end of the run the 24 car gets pretty good I talked to Alan Guffson earlier this week he said you know what we flat did not live up to our potential earlier this year until we got to Chicago first race in the chase we brought speed to that race then we won won Martinsville he said you know what we're a bunch of street fighters right now Jeff Gordon's going to have to fight his way past two championship rivals to win the championship in his final race. Kelly. No matter what happens here tonight, Martin Truex Jr. will finish with a best career ranking. The lowest he can finish is fourth. His previous best was 11th. Remember, he took two tires on that last stop, had raced up front. He's fallen back to 12th. He said he is tight at load up and free off. Talking about when he says tight it load up, what he's talking about is when the car enters the corner and it first gets load on it, that's where it gets tight. So on early entry, the car is tight and that hurts the car because now he can't be in the throttle as quick as his competitors can be because it's pointed in the wrong direction. So a little bit tight on corner entry is a good thing because that's security, but a lot of tight prohibits the car from making the turn the way it needs to turn. In front of the field. In this race is Brad Keselowski, his teammate Joey Logano running in the top five as well. Kyle Busch leading the championship four. Welcome back to the Ford EcoBoost 400 from Homestead Miami Speedway. Joe Gibbs Racing has won three cup championships. The most recent with Tony Stewart back in 2005. Celebrate the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship with Sprint. Switch now and save 50% on most of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Visit Sprint.com slash save 50% tonight. And Joe Gibbs Racing driver Kyle Busch currently leading the championship four. Mike. Enjoying a nice ride and uh, certainly one of the guys pulling hard for him is his crew chief Adam Stevens during the offseason after having tremendous success as Kyle Busch's crew chief in the Xfinity Series. Well, Adam Stevens was promoted to the Sprint Cup Series as crew chief, his first opportunity. Unfortunately for him, in the very first race weekend in Daytona, that's when Kyle Busch suffered his leg injuries, breaking his right leg and his left foot in the Xfinity race. Suddenly, Adam Stevens was thrust into a position he hadn't been with before. He was without his superstar driver. It forced him out of his comfort zone, he says, and forced him and his team to step up. He did say, however, without Kyle Busch driving the race car, it helped them identify some deficiencies in their program. 
parts of their program that with Kyle Busch behind the wheel they may not have seen. Consequently, Adam thinks that there may have been some silver lining to Kyle Busch missing 11 races, and that might be the fact that they're a stronger team now. Are they a championship team? We'll find out in about 64 laps, Rick. Final 63 laps now of the 2015 season in front of us. Matt DiBenedetto driving the 83 had a phenomenal save here as the six of Trevor Bain gets into the back of him. That's just a wreck that didn't happen. I mean Matt did a great job got all but got turned around did a wonderful job of not getting the car spun all the way around and making contact with the wall. Speaking of doing a wonderful job Brad Keselowski has been out front for the last 34 laps Keselowski leading. Kozlowski, one of the chase competitors, the 16 that started the 2015 season. And then after being eliminated, Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano, the two Penske drivers, trying to end on a positive note. Kozlowski up front, Logano running fifth. Brad Keselowski would be in the championship four if he were to have been able to win at Texas. But in the closing laps, it was Jimmy Johnson who was able to get by Brad Keselowski. Great hard racing toward the end, but Keselowski finishing in second and taking away that opportunity to advance into the championship four. And Brad dominated that race. I mean, it wasn't even close till the end. It looked like he was just going to drive away from everybody. Got a late race caution. The, the 48 guys and Jimmy Johnson did a good job of making their car better. Brad and his team did not. The 48 got by him late. But you, he, they did everything but win that race. And had they won that race, tonight they would be racing for a championship. With more on the race leader, here's Dave. And Rick, several drivers told me that even though the tracks are shaped differently, the Texas track predicts what you can do here. And so they were very good there. They're very good here again. Qualified in the top 10, fell back early, but then have worked on this car, made lots of adjustments. And even though he says it needs to drive a little bit better right now, off the corner right there, the two car has been very, very good. As he crossed the start finish line, just 59 laps to go in the 2015 season as we go NASCAR nonstop. Welcome back Brad Kozlowski continuing to lead at Homestead Miami Speedway Kyle Busch leading the championship four. He runs second. Kyle Larson's moved up to third and a big gamble the 78 making his way to pit road Kelly. The first of the championship four to pit Martin Truex Jr. has been asking for his lap times nearly every single lap. He's just saying that he needs more drive off. Remember they made that gamble on two tires. Last time down pit road, this time it'll be four Goodyear tires. You see the chassis adjustment that are making for them, and they're going to pack them full of Sunoco fuel. 11.9 seconds for Martin Truex Jr. in the 78. Steve, they still had at least 10 laps that they could have gone on fuel, so they have short pitted to come to pit road very quickly. They did, and they're going to drive the rest of the field. They'll have to come with them. They had a great sub 12 second pit stop, got new tires first. The gambles continue for Cole Pern. I like his gutsy calls. Cole Pern, the crew chief for Martin Trex Jr. As Martin Trex Jr. taking the access road inside of one and two to get back to the track. Now they have enough fuel they could go all the way as the four of Kevin Harvick also on his way to pit road. Dave. He was running fourth. He gives up that position. Rick, he'll get four Goodyear tires and snow go fuel. He said that time I can't do anything when I move up. The back goes all over the place. So it looks like an air pressure adjustment for Harvick as the crew works its way around to the left side to try to complete this stop. Yes, they are within their final fuel window, but will that be the final caution, Marty? Dave, for Jeff Gordon, about five laps ago, he said, I'm going to come to pit road. I think I have a flat tire, but the team Jumped on the wall. Jeff Gordon, though, stayed on the racetrack and did not say another word. He said it was slightly better. I just can't get back to the throttle. It's too tight. A little bit longer on the right rear there because they pushed a spring rubber in that right rear spring. That should loosen up the 24 car and a four-tire stop here for Jeff Gordon. And you see how long that took. 14-2 on the stop, Mike. Kyle Busch wasn't quite as happy with his car over the course of that last run, Marty, feeling like the car was rolling over on the right rear. It'll be interesting to see if they go to work on the chassis this time and go back on that previous change. That's exactly what they're doing. You can see the wrench going in the left side rear window. That's the wedge. They're going to go back on that adjustment and also an air pressure adjustment for Kyle Busch. 
Kyle Busch, the last of the four championship four contenders on pit road. Will that affect how much the four has been able to catch up to Kyle Busch? The four of Kevin Harvey coming through turn number two and down the backstretch as the 18 is getting up to speed going down the backstretch. I'm really shocked Rick the four of Kevin Harvick came a lap 215 Kyle Busch came a lap or two a lap after the four of Kevin Harvick but quick work by the 18 team on pit road and great work by Kyle Busch on and off pit road allowed him to stay in front of the four. With, un with 50 laps to go, that's the championship battle. You have the 18 in second and the four in fourth. And the gap between the two, five seconds. Kyle Busch, about three seconds behind Brad Keselowski. Kevin Harvick, seven seconds back. And the gamble by the 78 pitting early got negated because once the 78 pitted, then everybody said, you know what, we're not going to give you an advantage, and everybody started pitting. So even though it seemed to be a gamble to begin with, once they did it, everybody responded to it, did not let the 78 make any game whatsoever. This was green flag pit stop cycled through. David Reagan in the 55 scored in 20th is the last car on the lead lap. David Reagan will still have to come to pit road in the next few laps. So now it's 49 laps left. That's 49 laps to win a championship. Kyle Busch is in good position compared to Kevin Harvick. He's four and a half seconds ahead of Kevin Harvick. Hit your marks. Do everything perfect. Hope you and your team made the changes that are necessary so that the four can't catch you. You're only 48 laps away from winning a championship if you made the right changes and if you do the right job. And if another caution does not come out, that would be the big equalizer if the caution would come out in the next 48 laps. But that's Adam Stevens' concern right now. Adam Stevens wants to know from Kyle Busch, how did it take off in these first five laps? Maybe 10 laps, maybe 15. Have an idea of how this 18 car is on short run versus a long run. We've seen he have speed. He's in front of the four, as you mentioned, Jeff. The question is, if a caution does come out, what are the adjustments I need to make if the run is shorter than a fuel run? We know that's going to be the case. We're already only 47 laps to go. And the other thing you have to start thinking about, if you get a caution with 10 to go, with 15 to go, what do you do? Do you do four tires? Do you do two tires? Do you fill it with fuel? Do you just put enough fuel in it? So the crew chiefs now have to start thinking, OK, what am I going to do if the caution comes out now? What if I do 10 laps from now? So the strategy is starting to be laid right now for late in the race. And as the crew chiefs work on that, the driver, he just needs to work on that lap traffic. When you have a four second lead, not only do you need good laps, but you can't make that one mistake, get caught behind a lap car, make a poor decision. Lap times, lap times. And the spotter needs to be constantly feeding Kyle Busch his lap times every single lap. About every five or ten laps, give the, give the difference between you and the four of Kevin Harvick. You're 4.5 ahead. You're 4.2 ahead. He's catching you. You're pulling away from him. You need that information as well. But the rhythm of driving a race car is based off a of stopwatch. How fast am I going? Am I doing what I need to do? Am I making the necessary changes in my driving ability and, and my driving technique as the rubber wears off the tires? And all that information comes off a stopwatch that's being given to you. That information is being given to you by your spotter. And as we talk about the 18 of Kyle Busch, the four of Kevin Harvick, they are battling for a championship. Brad Keselowski, two and a half second lead had showed this speed at Texas as you documented Rick got beat by the 48 car in the closing laps here he was 45 laps to go 44 now with the opportunity to win a race a championship is absolutely huge that is the ultimate goal but for the two of Brad Keselowski he's not eligible for the championship this is the only goal left in front of him try to win tonight get another win on the 2015 season is what Brad Keselowski is thinking but you have to remember back to the way the season started for Kyle Busch. What an incredible comeback Kyle Busch has made. He missed the first 11 races of the season because of a broken leg and a broken foot. Team owner Joe Gibbs, Super Bowl winning owner Joe Gibbs, Super Bowl winning coach Joe Gibbs said this might be the most amazing comeback I've seen in athletics to have a driver get back behind the wheel in such a short amount of time and then go out and be as competitive as Kyle Busch has been able to do on this season and run for a championship and now in front of the championship four with that title just 43 laps away and remember what all that made all of that possible is NASCAR's rule 
of the medical waiver. If you get Stay injured, above, if you have an issue above. where you cannot so drive a race car, you used to be completely eliminated. You could not win a championship because you had to run every race. But NASCAR looked at it and said, you know what, that's not, and from a safety standpoint, really what we need to do. Should we have drivers driving with concussions? Should we have drivers driving with major injuries? So through that medical exemption, it gave Kyle Busch an opportunity to come back and drive this race car and win their way into this position. They couldn't just ride around. They had to go win and get enough points. Nobody thought they could. I didn't think they could. I thought there was no way they could get enough points, but they did it and they, they made it look easy. Mike. And, and to make it look easy, it took a lot of work and a lot of dedication, not only by uh, the team, but also by Kyle. Adam Stevens told me that they stayed connected as much as possible. They texted, they talked on the phone, many times throughout the course of the week over those first 11 races just so that Kyle had some input and understood what was going on with the race program at that time. Kyle said it worked, so, or excuse me, Adam said it worked so well that when Kyle came back, he was the same Kyle he remembered, at least mentally. He had some physical obstacles to overcome, but as far as knowing what the race car was doing and where they were with their program, he was right up on the plan. And I would even challenge that he's the same driver mentally. I think he's even a better driver mentally. What I see from Kyle Busch is this perspective. He enjoys being in the race car more than I think he ever did. He had an interview this weekend where he mentioned exactly the eight months to the day from his surgery. He kind of let his guard down, and I saw in his face the emotion, the appreciation of being behind the wheel. Yeah, let's be careful. Let's don't give you the championship just yet. How many races <laughs> have we watched? 39 to go, That's right. right. Well, we just talked about, we just talked about Brad Keselowski dominating the race in which he didn't finish it off, and Jimmy Johnson won the race. So anything can happen in these races. If we get a late race caution, all bets are off at that point. Again, they have enough fuel. They can go all the way to the end on fuel. The tires wear out quickly, so the lap times fall off. But Kyle Busch running second to Brad Keselowski, but in front of the other three championship four contenders. Kevin Harvick has dropped back to fourth. Kyle Larson just in front of him in third. Denny Hamlin running in the top five. Kurt Busch, Kyle's older brother, running sixth. Carl Edwards is seventh. Matt Kenseth, after a two-race suspension, running eighth. Joey Logano is ninth. Jeff Gordon, the other championship four contender, running tenth. And Jimmy Johnson, Jamie McMurray, and Ryan, excuse me, Martin Truex Jr., running 13th. Martin Truex Jr., the furthest back of the championship four. Currently on the lead lap, 19 cars. Martin Trex Jr., also an amazing story. A year ago, he moved over to Furniture Row. All through the 2014 season, Martin Trex Jr. struggled. He only led one lap in 2014, and then 2015 came around. An extremely competitive race car. Leading laps, leading races, and finally got that first win with Furniture Row Racing at Pocono in the summer. That enabled him to be a part of the 16 drivers running for a championship. Let's update all of the chasers. We start with Mike Massaro. And down here in the 18 camp, Rick, you can start to begin to feel a little bit of the tension surrounding this championship battle, some emotion. In fact, Kyle Busch's mother, Gay Bush, has just arrived in the pit, and she's observing. You can see on her face, there are almost tears in her eyes. There's a lot of anxiety here as she watches Kyle race for this championship right now. She saw her younger brother, Kurt, win a championship here at Homestead back in 2004, and now her younger son, Kyle, on the verge of perhaps his first Spring Cup Series title. She just embraced Joe Gibbs, and obviously watching with great anxiety here over the closing laps, Dave. Mike, Kevin Harvick asked that there was more pressure on having been the champion last year and doing it this way or pressure off. He said pressure on because uh, we want to be able to do it again. It's probably self-inflicted. We don't want to flop, but pressure off because we have been here before. Right now, the problem is a loose race car. He just told his team it's just not there. It's terrible. They're sure hoping for one more chance to work on it, Marty. Hey, Jeff Gordon knows time is running out here. He asked Alan Gustafson a moment ago how many laps are left. He told him 34 right now. He said 
we're better, but we're going to need some help. You see Jeff Gordon in 10th. And I think Rick Hendrick put it best this week. He said this championship or lack thereof will not define Jeff Gordon's career. For me, it's about the man, Jeff Gordon. We've had a 23-year relationship. We've never done a deal on anything other than a handshake. That says a lot about the man. To me, it's all about the friendship I built with Jeff Gordon. The championship and wins will not define him. Kelly. Martin Truex Jr. and his crew chief Cole Pern, two of the most easygoing, laid-back personalities in the garage. But as the handling on this car is still in bad shape, you can feel the frustration starting to set in. Frustrating, man. We're terrible. Car, man. Just keep fighting. Six, six tires against four. Hey, man. I wish we were better, but that's all we got. No, bud. I'm trying everything I can freaking think of. Do something, man. We ain't getting anywhere. And then that conversation continued with Martin Truex saying, hey, if we come back to pit again, please put some air in these right side tires. And that's the amazing thing I think that most people don't understand. They can feel when you go down in tire pressure. And they, a lot of times, Jeff, as a driver, you can feel it from which tire it is that's down on air pressure. Yeah, no question. It's, it's a huge part of the adjustments that the teams have, changing the air pressure in the tires, the difference in the air from the right to the left. All those make a great deal of difference. And, you know, at this point, you know, they've struggled all weekend. That's what you heard them say. We've been trying stuff all weekend. They just haven't found the speed. We thought coming into this weekend that they would be very, very difficult to beat. To our surprise, they just haven't had the speed. Well, and as we update you on those chasers, Kyle Larson in the third position. Yesterday's Xfinity winner has yet to win a Sprint Cup race in his sophomore season. This is his style track running around the top, and the lap times have kind of flipped. We've documented all night about how this 42 gets really, really good towards the second half of a run with 30 to go. Three seconds behind Brad Keselowski consistently beating him by a tenth to three tenths per lap. You see right here, the last lap, over a mile an hour faster than the leader. The question for Kyle Larson is, are 30 to go enough? If this race stays green, I believe we're going to see this 42 run the two down. Will he be able to catch him? Will he be able to pass him? Kyle Larson, 23 years old, out of Elk Grove, California, has never won in the Sprint Cup Series. Was able to win his third Xfinity Series race last night. And now, looking for that first win in the Cup Series. One of the classiest moves I've seen in a long time in racing last night as well. He won that Xfinity race, Rick. Not a single burnout. Drove straight to victory lane. When asked why, he said this was a weekend about champions. He allowed Chris Buescher to do his celebration on the front stretch, our Xfinity champion. I thought that was a very classy move from a very young race car driver. And last night, we saw Kyle Larson use this same strategy, running right up against the wall. As a matter of fact, Got up against the wall a couple times a little too close where he brushed up against the safer barriers. But he is running right at that wall. And I, I think it's hard for people to understand. He's a foot off of the wall running in there at almost 160 miles an hour. I'm going to have to correct you. I think he's four inches off the wall. I, think, <laughs> I mean, I, he is just really close. And one thing, one negative we've seen with Kyle Larson is can you do this for 400, 500 miles? It's very difficult to do. At this point, he has 28 laps. That's all he has left to do. He's done a great job of not getting into the wall, but a young race car driver needs to learn how to manage a race, how to manage 400 miles. He hasn't always been able to do that, but he has put himself in position tonight. We'll see if he can run Brad Keselowski down. He's going to have to get by Kyle Busch first. Kyle Busch is running second. Brad Keselowski out in front. Kyle Larson just a half a second behind Kyle Busch. Brad Keselowski has a two second lead over Kyle Busch. Keselowski leading the race. Kyle Busch leading the championship for 26 laps to go. As much as Kyle Busch would like to win this race when Kyle Larson catches him, I think Kyle Busch is going to wave him by, let him go. His focus has to be on Kevin Harvick. He has about six and a half, seven seconds over Kevin Harvick. There's no reason to contest. This is going to be the trouble for Kyle Larson. Other cars warning the top of the racetrack. You see he gets behind the 33 and the 21. He dives to the bottom of the racetrack. Can he clear these guys off the corner and get back to the top? And how much does that change his rhythm? Because he's been running right up against the wall, knowing exactly when he needs to turn, and now he has to move 
down away from the wall, so he's back up close to the wall again, but he got out of his rhythm. Well, that's right. I think he'll get right back into his rhythm now. You know, getting back to the wall, I think he knows what he has to do. But as you mentioned, when you catch that slower car, now you have to go somewhere you're not accustomed to, and it changes the technique of driving the race car. So he has to adjust to that very, very quickly. The top two. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson closing the gap, running third. Kevin Harvick is fourth. Denny Hamlin fifth. Denny Hamlin started on the pole earlier today. Kurt Busch running sixth. Joey Logano seventh. Carl Edwards eighth. Matt Kenseth ninth. Jeff Gordon in his final Sprint Cup Series race running tenth. The gap between Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson has closed down. Kyle Busch goes to the bottom of the track. Kyle Larson stays right up against the wall. The gap between second and third. Under 170 feet and closing. Kyle Larson coming up on a slower car. That will change his line. And that's really the problem for Kyle Larson. You see the 47 takes the line away. It's frustrating. I know these cars want to run the top of the racetrack, but it's their responsibility to understand what groove the faster lead lap cars are wanting. All the way to the bottom of the track goes Kyle Larson as Brad Keselowski continuing to run the high line. The gap closed also between Keselowski and Kyle Busch. Now just 1.7 seconds separating the top two. Yeah, what happens when you catch a slower car and he does not give you the line that you want? You remember that. The next time that you ca he catches you and he's trying to win a race, well, guess what you do? You don't give him the line that he wants. So you have to give respect if you ever want to get it back. Brad Kozlowski, 2012 Cup Series champion, only one win on the 2015 season at Auto Club Speedway. The fifth race of the season after being in the chase, the top 16 was not able to move into the championship four. Let's listen into the radio of the four. Why is that important, Rick? He's worried about the restart. There's 21 to go. Kevin Harvick and Ronnie Chillers have nowhere near given up. They're continuing to communicate. One caution, and the four is going to have the opportunity to pit, put tires on and restart within sight of that 18. Ronnie Chillers needs to know, how did the car drive on new tires? Do you need something different? And you mentioned Kyle Larson catching Kyle Busch. And what does Kyle Busch do when Kyle Larson catches him? I think Kyle Busch races him. I want to keep that gap. I want to have Kyle Larson between me and Kevin Harvick because if that caution does come out, I want to come off pit road second. I want to be in front of Kevin Harvick. I want to be next to him. So I think Kyle Busch runs as hard as he can right now. And Kyle Larson once again, one of the slower cars affects him. Into the wall goes Kyle Larson. And you can see he's very, dis very unhappy. He thought that he was going to have to go below the slower car. The slower car went to the bottom of the racetrack, forced the 42 to change his plan. He had to get out of the gas because of Ryan Priest in the 98 taking the same line that he was taking. So he had to get out of the gas and then into the wall went Kyle Larson. We'll see if it has slowed him down at all. The first win, Rick. Kyle Larson is going after win number one. I know Kyle Busch wants to win a championship, and championships are huge. But, Jeff, remember how important your first win was. Oh, I remember like it was yesterday. And when I got that first win, it seemed like the second win came a little bit easier. Like you got that, you got that done. You had that accomplished. Huge part of your career. It seemed like it was easier to get that second and third and fourth win. This is the important time when you look at Kyle Larson. What does he have in front of him? Clear racetrack, a half a straightaway to the 18. He has to capitalize. He struggled through traffic, but when he has that clean lace track, he has got to run some amazing lap times. We'll have to see if he can pull it off. And you have to wonder how much damage was done to the car when he got into the wall. You know how bad did it hurt the car? We heard. We've heard a lot of times when cars get into the wall, they now don't turn as good. They don't, you know, the front end doesn't work as good because aerodynamically, your car just isn't the way it was before you got into the race. You Jeff, into the wall. You've mentioned time and time again how you kind of have to guess where that car is going to go. Well, a couple laps ago, right here, you see Kyle Larson closing on the 98 of Ryan Priest very quickly. Well, the 98, 42 turns to the bottom. The 98 goes to the bottom. It causes the 42 to go back to the top. 
two young drivers. Kyle Larson guesses wrong on which direction the 98 is going to do. I think the frustration carries over to corner exit and he gets into the wall. Well, the mess is rhythm up. He's been entering the corner right against the wall. And this time he entered the corner and he wasn't against the wall. So that messed up the flow of the corner and that ended up putting him into the wall because that changed. When do I go back to the throttle? That again, I talked about it several times, the driving technique, it changed it. And that's why I got into the wall. Less than 16 to go. Brad Keselowski has just over a second lead now over Kyle Busch. That gap continues to shrink. Kyle Busch still leading the championship for Mike. And you got to think back to February to really appreciate this story, Rick. It was back then when Kyle Busch was sitting in a hospital bed, wondering whether or not he'd ever be able to compete for this championship this year. Now trying to complete the improbable comeback story. He may only be 15 laps away from his first Sprint Cup Series title. He's been very quiet over the radio, focused, not saying anything. Dave? Mike, who had the fastest car over the course of the season? You could argue it was the four. He finished second or first 15 times this year. But this championship is not won on averages, and they need to win this round. They need to get lucky and have a caution come out and get another adjustment on that four car, or it's not going to happen, Rick. Things are going to get very interesting now as Kyle Larson has caught Kyle Busch and gone by. Kyle Larson now will try to reel in Brad Keselowski. And Larson has been the fastest car on the, la on the track. As a matter of fact, the last lap, he was almost a second faster than Brad Keselowski as he's just a second back. And I think Kyle Busch recognized the fact that he could not keep Kyle Larson behind him. Instead of racing a young driver that wants his first win and potentially take your championship away, he just gave that spot up. He didn't put up a big fight. I think that was a smart move. I think if he was faster, he would have put up a bigger fight. But the rate at which the 42 was closing, Kyle Busch just made the decision, you know what, I'm going to get this spot up. Does he have enough time? Is Kyle Larson with just under 13 laps to go have enough time to close the gap and catch up to Brad Keselowski. There's the gap between the two. Brad Keselowski in the two. Kyle Larson in the 42. Still right up against the wall. It's Kyle Larson down to the bottom of the racetrack to two of Brad Keselowski. He clears Greg Biffle in the 16. So right now, Brad Spotter is telling him where the 42 is running. He's saying, look, the 42 is right against the wall. And the reason why is because Brad Keselowski is going to need to take that line away from him. He's going to need to get right up against the wall so the 42 cannot get on the outside of him if he wants to win this race. If he gets Kyle Larson the outside and doesn't protect it, Kyle will fly by him. Kyle Larson, a driver that has come from running dirt races. He ran wing sprints, and now the caution will come out. Debris on the racetrack brings the caution out with 11 laps to go. Crew chief, you're putting a lot on your crew, your pit crew, because these drivers with 10 laps, maybe nine laps to go, will all want to come to pit road. And the real concern for these championship contenders is what's the gamble? Will somebody take right side tires? We haven't seen it work, but what are they going to do? Martin Truex all the way back in 14th. He doesn't have much of a choice. He has to do something. Cole Pern on top of that pick box has to do something to give his driver a chance. This is not what Kyle Larson wanted to see, though. Kyle Larson running second is really good on older tires. Debris bringing out the caution as we have just 10 laps to go in the season finale. The flagman called the debris. It was actually right underneath the flag stand. And it's been pushed away and moved. So now Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson, who was able to get right behind the two. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, Jeff Gordon. Of course, Martin Trex Jr., one of the championship four. What kind of strategy, what gamble will one of the championship four be willing to do to try to win the title? This is what we talked about, the 18 and the 42. Had the 42 not gotten by the 18, he would be behind the two. We're going to see the four car pull up, getting on the pit road, and try to get right behind the 18. 
try to have a better stop than 18 and beat him off pit road. With the gap that these front three have, I think they all have to do four tires at this point. Lead lap cars making their way on the pit road. Dave Harvick was asked, what do you need for a shootout? He said, I've got to turn through the center. So they'll make an adjustment for him. Two tires to start and fuel, he'll get four. Kelly. Martin Truex Jr. really needed this caution to come out. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. It's going to be four fresh tires of fuel for the 78, Marty. Jeff Gordon was stuck in 10th that entire run. He said, I like that last adjustment. It took off good for a lap or two, but then just goes so loose off an air pressure adjustment. That's it, Mike. Wedge adjustment on the left side for Kyle Busch. A very important pit stop here. Four tire change. He's away. A very tight race off of pit road. Kyle Busch grabbing a spot as he's able to beat Larson to the commitment line, the pit road exit line. Larson drops a position. And I mentioned the debris that was just underneath the flag stand was what the flag man had signified, but it actually moved away after they came out with a caution, but that was the piece of metal. Kyle Busch, who was leading the championship four, and that was Coach Joe Gibbs' reaction when the caution came out. The one thing Coach Gibbs has got going for him is Kyle Busch might be the best driver of the 43 that are on the track on restarts. Always is aggressive, and he will start on the front row. It's going to be, we, we've talked about this racetrack, how unique this racetrack is, the progressive banking flatter on the bottom of the racetrack more banking as you get up near the wall it allows these drivers on these restarts to run all over the racetrack we're going to take the green with eight laps to go the lights off the pace car all of these cars taking the wave around all were a lap down the two of Brad Keselowski will come up behind the pace car and choose which line he wants to restart in either the outside line or the inside line then Kyle Busch will fall into the other spot behind them it will be Kyle Larson Kevin Harvick Denny Hamlin Joy Logano Kurt Busch so if you're Kyle Busch you have the guy that you're racing for a championship directly behind you what is the strategy do you try to block him in in turn one do you try to go high? Do you try to go low? Obviously, you just want to try to pass the two and go win this race. But if the two drives away, your strategy driving into turn one is so important. And we saw earlier the outside line was prevailing on restarts, and yet Brad Keselowski chooses the inside line for potentially this last restart. It's a driver choice. You, as a driver, you have to make a decision. Where do you feel like your best opportunity to win this race is? Brad obviously feels like the lower line is a way to go. The short of the way around turns one and two is what he feels the most secure about. Two by two, the field working their way through three and four, the pace car off the track. Brad Keselowski on the inside, race leader. Kyle Busch on the outside, championship four leader into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. running second. Kevin Harvick is third. To the bottom of the racetrack they go. Six laps to go. Jeff Gordon has made his way up to sixth. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick. Two of the championship four. Running one and two. Maintain. I got your back here. Hey, run between the teams. That's Kyle Busch's spot and letting him know where Kevin Harvick ran in one and two. Kevin Harvick already searching up the racetrack, looking for that clean air. He can't just follow the tire tracks of the 18, although it doesn't turn very well for the 40 and loses some ground. The gap. Hey, your marks here. Getting Five bigger more. between the 18 and the four. Kyle Busch trying to drive away to win the championship, his first title in the Sprint Cup Series. 
Kevin Harvick trying to defend his championship. But the gap getting wider. Kyle Busch trying to complete an unbelievable comeback. So Kevin Harvick driving his car as hard as he can possibly drive it. He saw a wiggle coming off turn four. That's just being in the throttle, trying to make it work, trying to get it to stick. The only way he can catch Kyle Busch is to try to push the car to its maximum limit. But to do that, you're going to have to go over the limit, and that's all Kevin Harvick can do. It looks like Kyle Busch has a better car, but Kevin Harvick will not give up. On the short run, Kyle Busch so strong. A great restart. And now he's putting lap to lap to lap, back to back to back. Great laps. Three to go for Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch is in focus on the front windshield. Pay no attention to the rearview mirror. Your spotter will let you know what's going on behind you. Just pay attention to your car. Do not let the four car force you into a mistake. A year ago, it took a win to win the championship. It's going to do it again. Kyle Busch in front of Kevin Harvick, the top two in the championship four. Two to go. I two love the tone. Laps the tone to go. of the spot are very calm, like he's sitting next to him at the table, not agitating in his driver at all. Let Kyle Busch does what he do best. Drive this race car to the max of his ability. He's pulled out to a second and a half lead. Down the back stretch they go. By 20. All good here, bud. 20 car links between Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Coming out of turn number four. The white flag will go in the air. White flag. Coming back no matter what. By 20. Don't One more time around. Kyle Busch missed the first 11 races of the season with a broken leg and a broken foot after an accident at Daytona. It's by 20. Down the back stretch. His closest competitor, just a dot in the rear view mirror. Through three and four. No one has battled through as much pain and had as much perseverance as 30-year-old Kyle Busch. Tonight he earns his first cup title. Kyle Busch, the 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup champion. interviews the championship celebration will all be on NBC SN the fourth championship for Joe Gibbs racing the first for Kyle Busch Sunday Night Football next congratulations champion you're the new champion we'll come on down here when you get ready to celebrate we'll celebrate right there at the uh Spring Cup. And welcome back to Homestead Miami Speedway. Kyle Busch has shown such maturity. He has grown as a driver. No one ever questioned the talent that Kyle Busch had. They questioned if he could do what it took to win the championship. And he has just done that. Jeff Gordon in his last race climbing out of his car. A racing career that started at the age of five. Jeff Gordon has lived his dream. And he took us along 
for that ride. Dave. And as we come down here, Rick Hendrick has found Jeff. Celebrating over the three top series in NASCAR, he's won over 150 races. A championship in the Xfinity Series, and now a Sprint Cup Series championship. Let's go back to Dave Burns with Jeff Gordon. And Rick Hendrick has stepped away for the moment. Jeff now getting congratulations from his team. Jeff, I heard you call it a dream come true, thanks to Mr. H, before you got out of the car. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, who would have ever thought uh, coming from Indiana as a sprint car driver that could come south to North Carolina and, and, and race for people like Bill Davis and then get the opportunity to work with the greatest owner in the Cup Series that there's ever been, and that's Rick Hendrick. And he's way more than a car owner to me, so I'm so appreciative. It's been... Uh, most amazing experience. Gosh, I'm a little disappointed, I'll be honest. I, I thought going into today's race, we had something for him, and I think when the sun went down, we were missing a little something and just didn't quite have it when, when, when the track cooled down and had to work on it. But I love the effort, and we showed uh, what we're made of right there at the end by climbing our way back up to, to six. So I'm proud of that, I'm proud of everything. That's the biggest thing, and these little ones make it all worthwhile. It's a happy, happy, good day. I want that win, but uh, we're still going to celebrate. <laughs> Jeff, with the kids here and Ingrid as well, we see what matters now going forward, Rick. Family. Jeff Gordon transitioning into the next chapter of his life. And Kyle Busch. Winning his first Sprint Cup Series championship. How does this change Kyle Busch? He is now the 2015 Sprint Cup Series champion. He did whatever he had to do. It took winning the race once again. Joe Gibbs with his fourth championship. JD as well behind the wall and the over the wall crew did everything they had to do as well crowning a champion 2015. Kyle Busch missed the first 11 Sprint Cup races of 2015 after a vicious crash in Daytona where he broke his leg and foot then in May he and wife Samantha welcome their son Braxton to the world. And tonight he, his family, and team can celebrate a Sprint Cup championship. What an incredible year it's been for Kyle. The mob of fans team members family all around Kyle just moments ago and now it's time for Kyle to savor this championship moments ago Kyle and Samantha what an incredible run Kyle his family have made Kyle now joining his brother Kurt as a champion in the Sprint Cup Series. Say thank you. She has been there through all the tough times, good times and a tough, and they had a lot of tough times earlier this year. Let's go to Dave. Another repeat did not happen for Kevin Harvick this year. After leading laps early, Kevin, where did the car go? We were just uh, struggling all night, to be honest with you, with our Budweiser Jimmy John Chevy. 
Um, we, we had a lot of trouble getting up off the corner and putting the power down, and the longer the run went, the looser that we would, would get up off the corner. But I just want to thank everybody uh, at Hendrick Engines, SHR, uh, Outback, Mobile One, Hunt Brothers, uh, Ditech, everybody who's a, a part of this car and, and been uh, supportive of us over the last two years. It's been a great uh, couple years and, and looking forward to next year. So it's, uh, it's fun to be able to, to run like this. You always want to win, but um, I, I've learned not to get greedy. After last year, I felt like we had everything go our way, and, and tonight it, it didn't go our way. But um, just congratulations to the 18 team and everything they did, and, and all of our guys have, have done a great job all year. People coming by to congratulate Kevin Harvick. It was a good run for him. He'll go again at it next year. Kevin Harvick came as close as you could. Finishing second to Kyle Busch. Will finish second in the point standings. Jeff Gordon finishing sixth in the race. Will end up third in the point standings. And Mark Truex Jr. Finished 12th in the race and will finish fourth in the points. His best finish ever in the point standings. Kyle Busch making his way around the track and will make his way to the championship stage. A year of perseverance. Kyle Busch after coming back from his injuries. An incredible run where he won four races. This is now his fifth. Let's go to Marty. He's coming here. He's been congratulated by all of his teammates, including David Reagan, who was such a key part of this team when Kyle Busch was out. He filled in and helped the team get to this point to where they could win a championship. Taking a moment, take a breath, and kind of soak in the moment, if you will. Get a drink of water. Trying to get his arms around the fact that he is your 2015 Sprint Cup Series Championship. Here comes Kyle Busch. m &Ms for everybody. Kyle, you said on the radio afterwards, you said, I don't know what life's all about, but I don't know what to say about this year. What do you say about this year, Kyle? Pretty, pretty unbelievable, I guess. You know, this is uh, a dream of a lifetime, a dream come true, and something that uh, that only happens every so often, you know. And I just can't believe it with everything that happened this year and all the turmoil, all the things that uh, that I went through, that my wife went through, that my family went through, and people those around me that they went through. This championship is all for all for these guys, for my wife, my family, and. Um, Everyone who sacrificed so much to get me here and to get me to this place today, whether it's been on my team right now or on my teams in the past, it's uh, certainly awesome, awesome, awesome. And I can't thank M&M's enough. M&M's Crispy, they're a phenomenal sponsor. Uh, I love the family. They're, they're so great. They're with us here today. This is uh, a long time coming for them. They've been in this sport two, maybe three times as long as I've been here. And this is their first opportunity for a championship. So. Uh, I can't thank Toyota enough. I had a very fast Toyota Camry tonight. Adam Stevens prepared such a great race car, and Adam Stevens is my hero. Um, I love that guy, and I'm glad I could get the, the fifth win to, to, to get him a little bit more of a race for next year. That's pretty awesome, but uh, man, uh, I can't thank Interstate Batteries enough, Monster Energy for, for sticking with me and being with me, my fans, all the Kyle Busch fans out there. Uh, man, I, I appreciate all you guys so much, everyone that follows me through the thick and the thin. Through the good and the bad, and the ones that are always there behind me. So uh, you guys are awesome. Everyone here, you guys are awesome too. This is uh, a dream come true. A dream come true. Eight months ago tonight, you were laying in a Daytona hospital. All the rehab. You told me that you didn't know if you could do anything harder than that rehab. Did you really think this moment was possible, Kyle? Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, I, I said back then. I'll say it again. You know the. The rehab and then getting back and getting ready and getting healed and, and focused, all that was, was the hardest part, the yeah, hardest thing I've ever gone through. And, and to put it all together here tonight, this night wasn't quite that hard, you know, but um, I, I, had, I had one special driver and Tony Stewart come see me eight months ago tonight, and, uh, and he helped me through a lot of that stuff. But uh, I've had already about six or seven here tonight, so uh, it's pretty awesome to have this opportunity and to be here and 
to beat guys like this one right here. Mr. Uh, Mr. Four time. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's awesome to race my hero in his last round and beat him out for it, man. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, the significance, Kyle, of, of being able to race your childhood hero and win a championship. I, I, I don't know that you could have ever scripted it any better. For, for him to be in his last year and go out, I, I guess I wish I could have beat him sooner in, in that time, you know, when he was still running or had another year to go after it. But, uh, man, to, to have a shot with these four final drivers, you know, Martin Truex, one of the best in Homestead, and Kevin Harvick, one of the best the last two years, and Jeff Gordon, one of the best of all time. You know, to go up against those guys here tonight and, and to score this victory for this number 18 Toyota Camry was, was phenomenal. And I, I can't uh, I can't be remiss without thanking Coach Gibbs and, and his family and JD's here tonight. JD was the first selfie over there in turn one. That's so cool. And uh, man, this night is just all about these guys and these these people that uh, that have poured their heart and soul into Kyle Busch. So much changed you this year, the wreck and everything. But talk to me about Brexton and what that brought to your life, and how that changed your perspective on job, life, everything. Well, it sure did. I mean, uh, I've never dreamed of anything so little could be so happy. But uh, he's such a cool little dude, and um, you know, he's always smiling, always having fun, and except about 4 a.m. You know, that's daddy time. That, that's a little rough, but. Uh, it's all worth it in the end, you know, uh, Samantha and I, for what she went through and what we've been through this year, to have Brexton in this year, his birthday 5 18, 15, it's, uh, it's so cool to, to have him and to have him be a part of all of this here tonight and, of course, uh, to celebrate with his father. Uh, he'll never know what this meant today, but uh, maybe one day if it's on his own, he'll know what it means. i got to ask you about a little bit of racing. Talk me through that last restart. Man, you were out of a cannon. Yeah, well, I, I knew it was time to go. I, I don't know why Brad chose the bottom, but he gave me the top, and I was like, well, this is interesting because I wasn't expecting that. But uh, it did put Harvick behind me, so I knew I just had to protect whatever Harvick was going to do if he was going to try to shoot the middle and shoot the gap or whatever it was going to be. But, um, man, he... I don't think I got hit. I think I just got a really good restart and, and just got going. I don't know if Brad spun his tires or what, but when I got to turns one and two, we were pretty even. But uh, man, I just I held it to the floor and I gave it everything I had those last uh, seven, eight laps, whatever it was. And that's why I said his Toyota Camry was awesome. And Adam Stevens made a phenomenal adjustment there on that last pit stop to give me exactly what I needed to go out there and run some hard laps for eight laps and drive away. Congratulations, you're the champion. I hear you, man. This is so cool. Woo! Yeah! All right, Kyle Busch, obviously a little bit happy to celebrate this 2015 Sprint Cup Series championship, Rick. Brothers. Family. Kyle and Kurt, the father. All with an embrace. Kyle Busch will receive the championship trophy when we return. The celebration has just begun. Kyle Busch, 2015 Sprint Cup Series champion, will be on the stage next. A massive celebration. About to get underway for the 18 team. Kyle Busch has given Toyota their first championship in the Sprint Cup Series. And he makes his way up the steps to the championship stage. Let's go down to Chris Devoto. Thank you, Rick. Kyle Busch, the 2015 Spring Cup Series champion. I know he likes the sound of that, has made it to the stage. Let's begin the championship presentation. First, from our series sponsor, Marcelo Claré, the CEO of Sprint, with some words for Kyle. That's great. Hey, Kyle. Congratulations. So I want to tell you, you're an inspiration not only to every NASCAR fan, but pretty much every person who watches sports. And coming back from breaking your leg, your inspiration. So on behalf of my 33,000 employees at Sprint, wanted to congratulate you on the first Sprint Cup Series and hopefully many more to come. So congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you awesome job. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know there's a lot of people back here who you want to see and talk to, but I know one thing you said when you were uh, rehabbing to get back here, you missed hoisting trophies above your head. CEO of NASCAR, Brian France, has a very special one for you. I sure do. On behalf of the millions of fans around the world, congratulations bringing Toyota and M&M's their championship. Congratulations. Hey, 
everybody. Thank you so much. You got it, man. Thanks. Take us back. You've been talking about it was eight months to the day. Uh, you laid in a hospital bed, not really sure if you would ever necessarily race again. And you said the most important thing was to get back, to be back for the birth of your son, to be standing by Samantha's bedside, and to get back to what you love, which is racing. Would you have ever dreamed, though, after missing 11 races, you'd be standing here showering your team in M&Ms? Uh, no, not in a million years. I never would have dreamed this moment on this year, you know, but. This is so unbelievable, but yet so awesome at the same time. Uh, I can't thank M&M's enough. Everyone from M&M's, the family, the company, all of our supporters there from uh, from Snickers and Skittles, uh, Pedigree, American Heritage. It's just been so awesome to have them standing behind me through all these years and to give me these opportunities to come out here and race their car and to do the best I can. And uh, from there, it's, it's Toyota and their love and their support. Those guys are awesome and amazing. TRD gave me a great engine tonight. It was so fast. and. Uh, our car drove so good because of Adam Stevens and, and what he did and what he can do and and what this company is about, Joe Gibbs Racing. It's so cool to get Joe Gibbs and JD Gibbs and the family and, and the whole company, everyone, thank you guys all back at the shop for building me such a fantastic race car this weekend. Uh, to, to put it all together and to win this championship, it goes all back to JGR. You know, that, that trophy isn't mine. This is everyone's here. You know, I, I wanted to come back from from rehab and do everything that I could do to power through and be strong and stronger than ever for everyone here and to pay them back for what all they've sacrificed in their lives for me. Well, I know this team behind you has been with you for a long time but so has the woman standing behind you beside you with your little boy six-month-old Brexton. If I could get you Kyle I'm gonna have you turn for a minute. I want to ask Samantha. Samantha what does it mean to you? You came up here tears flowing. What does it mean to you? amazing I don't think people know how hard he worked and what we both went through this year from trying to get pregnant with this one to the accident to fighting his way back and it's absolutely amazing and he's been the greatest blessing and now <laughs> Braxton has something to say are you going to eat that it's, it's just a storybook year I'm so proud of Kyle and the team and it's, it's truly just uh, I can't even tell you the emotions right now this is absolutely amazing are you going to eat her microphone and as soon as we came up here, Brexton has been just enthralled with this microphone. And you may have a broadcaster on your hands, if not a race car driver. A race car driver. <laughs> Look at true mom pulling boogers out of his nose in victory lane, right? It's what you do. It's what you do. Also, I want you to celebrate with your husband. I'm going to bring Coach Gibbs in here as well. Congratulations to you for everything this means to your family. As we work across the stage here, I want to grab Coach Gibbs celebrating here. Coach, the first championship for Toyota. How do you even put that in words? Well, there's so many firsts to this. You know, we have the M&M's, it's their first. They've been in racing 25 years. It's Toyota's first. Awesome, Bob Carter and everybody's here. That's awesome. We got Kyle's first. We got Adam's first, our crew chief. Can you believe a rookie crew chief? And uh, we got Norm Miller from Interstate. He's the only guy, he's had, he's had two. But it's, it's really, a total team effort. I want to say thanks to all the fans. It's absolutely awesome. The Lord's blessed us with a great group of guys back here. And everybody back home, too. I feel bad for everybody back at the shop. Lord's blessed us with a great group of guys. And uh, I want to say a big thanks to the Lord for this and for all the fans. It's awesome. All of those guys back at the shop are celebrating as well. Maybe not as big as these guys back here are celebrating, but this group has been with Kyle ever since he joined Joe Gibbs Racing. And I know it's been a tough year on the track and off the track for your family, for this Toyota family as well. Yeah, it has been. We had, uh, yeah, yeah. Norm Miller wants to thank Ann. Thank Ann. Thank Ann. And thank you so much. JD's here. Uh, I'm excited about having him here. 
and our whole family. All the Gibbs groups run all over the place. I don't know where our grandkids are and everything, but they're running around they're celebrating running, too. They're running around celebrating someplace. <laughs> It is fantastic. I know this means a lot to both of you, JD. So great to see you back at the track. I loved having the big hug as soon as we got up here. And you mentioned the first for Adam. Adam Stevens around here somewhere celebrating with the team. I've actually been holding on to uh, Kyle's monster energy since he came up here. I don't know, Kyle, if you want that back or not. He was hands, hands full with the trophy. Let's bring in Adam Stevens if we can. The first year crew chief. You're not supposed to win a Sprint Cup Series championship in your first year on the job. How did you do it? Uh, I leaned on Kyle Busch pretty heavy. You know, uh, you just got to get him close. That's the beauty of Kyle and uh, his talent, his skill, and his dedication. And his feedback is so good, you know. Uh, I think anybody could have adjusted on his car tonight and, and all year, really. And the total strength of JGR, uh, with all the wins we've had and as competitive as we've been, it could be any one of the teams right here, right here now, if you shook the chase up and re-ran it again. So I I'm just proud of all everybody at home at JGR and everybody at TRD for the total team effort and teamwork. And uh, I'm thrilled to be a part of Kyle Busch's career. You know, he's a future Hall of Famer, and to be anywhere close to him is amazing for me. Well, I know those first 11 races, you kept waiting for Kyle to come back, but one of the first drivers to come over here and congratulate you, David Reagan, who filled in for Kyle. We saw Denny, Matt, Carl, all of the teammates. This really is a family. As we look at the family of Kyle, Samantha, and Brexton, hug and celebrate. This is a family on this stage and behind us. Yeah, you can't get a closer group than what we have here. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned David Reagan and Matt Crafton and Eric Jones. We learned a lot about our program in that time that they were driving. And it let us advance and, and, and move our program forward and get ready for KB's return. What do you guys think? A big party tonight, Kyle? I think so. He's getting the flag. He's going to celebrate with his team. The celebration, Rick, down here is just beginning. And you are right in the middle of it. We've heard from the champion, Kyle Busch. We've heard from Jeff Gordon, and Kevin Harvick. Now let's hear from Martin Truex Jr. Kelly Stavis was with him after the race. Martin Truex Jr. will finish fourth in the championship standings. Martin, I know you had your hands full with this race car all night long, but what does it say about this single car team to get you in the championship picture? Well, we came a long way as a group. Uh, really proud of everybody. Really proud of Cole and uh, really proud of Barney, you know, to get him this far. Um, you know, we, we have a lot to be proud of as a team and, and a lot to build on for next year. So we're uh, we're a little disappointed in the weekend, obviously. Just, uh, you know, really, really was excited and optimistic coming in here with this opportunity and we just never really could get the car to react to anything we wanted to do all weekend it wasn't from a lack of effort the guys put an awful lot of effort into this car out in denver and i want to thank them for that and you know a lot, of, a lot more effort last night changing everything pretty much under this thing and uh just seemed like no matter what we did it did the same thing and, and we fought the same issues so uh, a little disappointed but all in all you know a great season really proud of my team and uh we definitely have a lot to build on for the future you faced so much adversity both professionally and personally in the last few years. Seems like the journey's just beginning, but what has it been like to this point? It's been really gratifying. It's been, uh, you know, again, I'm just proud to work with this group of guys. They're, uh, they're a special group, and uh, if we can keep it together, I think we can go a long ways for a long time. So, um, you know, what, what doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And, you know, all those things I had to go through are part of the reason I'm here today and had this opportunity. So uh, I wouldn't change it for anything and uh, just thankful for all the people that uh, supported us over the years and, you know, especially my team this year, Barney Visser, Joe Garoni, everybody there, Furniture Row. And uh, we've got a lot of exciting things going on this winter to get ready for next season and you know, hopefully we, we can make that next step. Big things in the offseason. You'll switch manufacturers to Toyota and team up with Joe Gibbs Racing, who's just won the championship. What does that have you to look forward to? It's pretty exciting, really. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. It's a big deal for Barney and everybody to you know, get that factory support, to get teamed up with a team that, uh, that just won the championship is a pretty big, big deal. So before I forget, I want to say congrats to Kyle. Uh, he's going to be a great champion. Uh, he's kind of had this coming for a long time. And also uh, for a, a, a great farewell to Jeff. He's, uh, he's been an awesome competitor over the years, and I've learned a lot from him, and we're going to miss racing against him. But uh, all in all, we're, uh, you know, we're not going to get much sleep. We're going to get back to work. We'll be down here testing in about three weeks, getting ready for next year. So. Uh, Take a little vacation, relax a little bit, and uh, right back at it. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. We just heard Martin Trex Jr. say we're not going to get a lot of sleep. I'm guessing that Kyle Busch and his team they probably won't sleep much over the next few days as the celebration will continue for them. As we look at the results, this amazingly is the first chase 
win for Kyle Busch. He has never won when in the chase. He's been in the chase for nine times, but this is the first time that he's won a chase race. Well, he picked the going to do it, that's for sure, and he had to win because you see Kevin Harvick finish second. And Jeff Gordon, I know he's disappointed, but to come here and run six, nothing to hang your head about. And Denny Hamlin in 10th after being three laps down early. It's quite a recovery we see here on page two. Martin Truex Jr. in 12th. Hard to believe that four chase contenders came in. The worst one finished in 12th. That's still a great season for the 78 team. Ryan Blaney, announcement made earlier that he will be running full time with Wood Brothers in 2016. Tony Stewart finishing 29th at season's end. He will enter his retirement season next year. Brett Moffitt finishing 31st and ending up Rookie of the Year for the Spring Cup Series. Dale Earnhardt Jr. involved in the incident early on, 40th. Clint Boyer in his last race with Michael Walter Bracing finishes 43rd. The numbers for Kyle Busch, amazing. The 30-year-old from Las Vegas, his first Sprint Cup championship. Four championships for Joe Gibbs racing. You know, Joe Gibbs, such success in the National Football League and brought that mentality to NASCAR racing as well. We saw Kyle celebrating with his brother, Kurt Busch. They now join the Labonte brothers, his brothers that have won a championship, the highest level of stock car racing. Now let's go to Rutledge Wood. Rick, something really special that you could see down here from the infield. When Kyle Busch was doing those burnouts, you saw a completely different effect on this crowd than you would have, say, a year ago if he had won. A year ago, you would have heard some cheers and a few boos, but tonight, you heard all cheers. No one went for the exits. Everybody stood. There were so many camera flashes as they watched their new champion do burnouts, and it really speaks volumes for how far Kurt, Kyle Busch has come in this year. After the accident, from being a father, there were so many things that it seems like fans have really reacted and understood that this maybe isn't the guy that we thought he was. Because we know in past, when you heard guys like Dale Jarrett yesterday and Kyle Petty say, ooh, this, this wreck last night in the Xfinity race, the old Kyle Busch would carry that anger throughout the weekend, right? He shook it off. He took his truck championship as an owner with him. And tonight, we see him as a champion. But most importantly, look at all those fans down there. To be a part of this, to celebrate the biggest day in this sport, pretty amazing to see how far he's come in a year, guys. Great point of the three championships that were settled in Homestead, Miami. Kyle Busch won two of them. He won the owner's championship in the Camping World Truck Series on Friday and then turned around and won the Drivers' Championship in the Sprint Cup Series tonight. Yeah, and I think what Rutledge mentioned there about his approach to the weekend, how he shook off the wreck in the Xfinity race, is absolutely accurate. The Kyle Busch we saw run the chase this year, his approach in the first nine races, very calm demeanor, methodically put himself forward to the next round. Coming here to Homestead, though, knew in his heart, we heard in his interviews, he thought it would take a win, and that's what it did take. It was. Uh, Classic Kyle Busch tonight. And the fact that he ran the Xfinity race at all. You know, a lot of drivers coming into this championship battle on a weekend, they would say, you know what, I'm not doing it. Well, Kyle Busch, he loves to race. That, and that is, you know, that is the thing about Kyle Busch. You put him behind a race car, something he loves to do, something he is great at. Not good, he is great at it, has a passion for it, and that showed. I mean, it would have been easy for him to come in here and say, I'm not driving an Xfinity car. I want to focus on a cup car. But him driving that Xfinity car makes him a better race car driver. He just loves to race. This celebration is going to continue, and we're going to stay right here with it. Post-race coverage continuing until 10 p.m. Coming up next, Krista Kyle and DJ.